Hey, Sean, where are you going? Fuel sheets. First one up is mowing of the roadsides. There's a little spot down there in the fourth row that I drew the attention to the CEO some time ago. I didn't check on the RFS number, but it's the third time I've been on about this piece. It's part of the contract. I want it mowed so that the rest of the street looks tidy. And while they're about it, I'd like them to extend it a wee bit to go further down past the apple tree to the corner. That would make that road look tidy. At the present moment, it looks like a half done job. Footpaths. I noticed that you've got a nice long list of footpaths, but no mention of a footpath to the showgrounds. That's an accident waiting to happen. The same sort of thing happens past the Kauwata Marae to the cemetery. Those blind spots, those little pieces of road that people walk out on, is another accident waiting to happen. And it wouldn't be the fault of the driver. I would like to see something as a matter of urgency about those footpaths because as roads get busier, things start to happen. And the, in that sense, we prevent accidents before they happen. The thing that I've just come to hand is this. It would appear to me that these girls are usurping your role. I don't like the way it's going down. I'm not sure that these kind of boxes over by the on state uh, recreation road are a good idea because it must slow the traffic. And that's a main road. I accept the need for safety, but the road does have footpaths. Things like this creep in and sometimes not for the best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Sean. Just a just, just question. Remind me again, which one's Thorpe Road? As you go over the railway line by the way station, yep. directly in front of you is a patch of grass It's about that long. Yep. I've taken that up with the CEO on a number of occasions. Okay, cool. And it hasn't been done. Um, and I kind of feel, if I can find the RFS number for your convenience, no, 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 it's okay. Okay. And I, I just, I just, I had a, a blank thing going on there. I couldn't remember which one was thought right. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, and it's just part of the contract because when Mike Colbrook was in charge, he checked it out on me and got it done. And that was part of the contract. Okay, so how long ago did you put the tariff piece? Well, quite some time ago now. I tell you you'll what, you'll find it. Okay, no, do, do give me the RFX number. We may, we may as well run it, run it through. What is the RFX number, Sean? Sorry, I, I'll change my mind here. Sorry, Yeah, I'll have that. Tip 6 0 that's the one. Oh, thank you. Because it's been in my pocket here for a long, long time too. Okay, now we'll, um, we'll see what we do. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Lawson. Hello there. Hang on. I'm just going to arrange your volume. You there? Can you hear me? Sorry. Can you hear me? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Try now. Try now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, just speaking of hearing, um, I just have to apologise in advance because I am hearing impaired and um, will find it difficult uh, with some of the conversations. But anyway. Uh, life's a bit like that. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, am I free to start? Yep. Thank you. Good, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Lawson. I am the funding 
coordinator for the Youth Line Helpline. Um, I'm sure many of you will have heard of uh, Youth Line and its helpline, but just to give you um, a few key points about it. Um, we've, been we've been supporting the Rangatahi and their whanau for over 50 years now. Um, we operate a free national 24 by 7 crisis helpline. That helpline staffed by 200 uh, volunteer counsellors um, and who uh, last year we received just under 150,000 texts, emails and phone calls to our helpline. Uh, and 441 of those contacts were from the Kaikoi Hokianga area. Now there, there are 2,000 young people aged 15 to 24 in your area. So that 441 means that almost one in four reached out to us for help. Um, and COVID of course has increased the nature and complexity and number of young people who are contacting us for support. What, not, as well as the helpline, we uh, are strongly committed to uh, providing, promoting our services in schools in your area and in partnership with Attitude, which is the Parenting Places Youth Division, we promoted the services of Youthline to three schools in your area for to 400 pupils, uh, Kaikohi Christian School, Northland College and Okaiha College. So whilst we don't have a physical of the helpline itself. 80% of young people are aware of the services that we provide and we're active in the schools in your area. And most importantly, our counsellors who are supporting your rangatahi um, uh, are able to refer the young people. If we're not able to help them or they need further support, we're able to refer them to the services and social agencies that are operating within your area and in your towns. So we we are able to provide that connection. And it's interesting that uh, when I was talking yesterday to the to the uh, the councillors at Tehiku, uh, one of the uh, councillors there uh, had a direct experience with Youthline and that her daughter had contacted us and been supported over a period of time in terms of helping her out. So there's a local example, I think, of the of the support that we can give these young people. Now, just to finish, the helpline costs us $1.35 million per year to operate. We receive 90,000 a year from an Oranga Tamariki contract. That means we've got to raise $1.2 million a year each and every year. And that's what my job is, to raise funds for the helpline. The Kaikohi Hokianga share, you'd be interested to know of that 1.35 million is in fact $4,045. Doesn't seem a lot, but I mean, that's the cost of supporting the people, the young people in your area. Um, and for this application, we're asking for a contribution to that cost of $3,000. Happy to take questions from you on that basis. Right, I will start with Moko. Sure. Hey, thank you for that. Um, did you say that our share is 2,045? You're asking for a bit more than that at 3,000, is that right? 4,045. Oh, yeah. I, um, 
I was interested. We actually have eight secondary schools in our in our area, and you you have reached out to three of them, and you get sort of a one in four. Statistically, one in four of our youth reach out to you. Do you think that's based out of the fact that three of of eight of our schools have been reached? If you went into every school in our area, perhaps that number would be higher. I don't know. Any comment there? Well, um, I'm sorry, I, I really didn't hear that very well at all. I'm sorry. It, so, uh, sorry, Jeff. Is that a bit better? Yes, it is. I'm, I'm just lowering my mask so you can hear me. Um, I, I really appreciated all the statistics you gave, um, and it was quite surprising that one in four of our the rangatahi in our area have actually reached out to the yes. service, and you you said that you guys have been active in three of our schools in our area. We have eight secondary level schools in our um, in our ward. So I wondered if, if you had reached out to all of them or would that number actually be much higher than just one in four of our rangatahi? Yeah. Do you have yeah, any correlation I'm... or comment about the, the fact okay. that you've got one in four rangatahi reaching out but have okay. only been into three out of eight schools? Okay. I'm I'm... I'm sorry, I'm going to be interpreting what I think you said. <laughs> um, the, the, we have a program that over the course of a, probably it's more 12, 18 month period, we aim to, uh, to promote our services in uh, all the schools in the area. But with the, uh, to be honest, the major focus is on the secondary schools in the area. So over a 12, 18 month period, we would expect to be presenting at all the secondary schools in your area and some of the intermediates. Uh, the, the last 12 months figures are slightly distorted by the fact that COVID and lockdowns prevented us from being quite as actors, active as we would like to be. But our aim is to get to every secondary school in your area. Cool. Thank you for that. Thank you. Louis. Yeah, I had a question, question along similar lines. Uh, I, I was concerned about the, the statistics you use, one in four, and, yes. and the number of people that you actually dealt with. Now, I'm just wondering if a lot of those people that, uh, that did contact you contacted you on more than one occasion, they might have run you three well, or four times. Is that considered in those statistics? And yes, the, the look, yeah, it's a good question and thank you for that. Um, it's fair to say that, that the, the statistics are on a sort of pro rata basis, which which doesn't completely take into account um, whether they've contacted us once or four times or six times, um, because uh, that's a more challenging statistic to put together. However, so the, the, the one in four is is based on the only way we, we can determine that allocation, which is on a sort of pro rata basis of, 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 of um, on a percentage basis. So in that, the, the contacts will include, in some instances, multiple contacts from an individual. Okay. And, and the second part of the question was like in the Hokianga, there are, very few people that have got contact with the internet or a telephone, telephone reception or whatever. How, how do you deal with the issues with regard to that? Like that would sort of... Just, just uh, would you... Like the Hokianga, Hokianga is short of uh, con connectivity, you know, like not everybody's connected to the internet or the phone or whatever. And so there, there'd be a large proportion of our kids that are missing out on that. Yes, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. I just got, I'm just not picking up some of this audio at all. I'm really sorry. Through the chair, Jeff, if you if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll put the questions in the chat and you might be able to see them there. Yes. If that, okay. if I'm not holding the meeting up too much. I have a question. Yeah, okay, well. So the question, Jeff, is in your chat now. How do you deal with people who live in the rural communities with no access or connection to uh, technology? 
That's a better way of putting it. Ah, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really good question because it, um, and in fact, it it's not just rural communities we found because what COVID showed us was that, um, it's about having the digital devices as well as the connection to technology. So it's that, that's what COVID uh, and. The bottom line is um, that th there may well be some who it is just not possible to get to. I mean, we most 91% of our contacts are by texts, and therefore the easiest and most technologically available service is a texting service by mobile phone. That's relying on that's relying on the fact that. Um, the mobile f that they've got a mobile phone. If they've got a mobile phone or access to a mobile phone, they can contact us. And 91% of of our contacts are by mobile phone. Emma, I just see this another is question. question is in the chat, Jeff. Yes. Did the, did the statistics get better or worse over COVID lockdown? This the the statistics got significantly worse uh, over the lockdown, and in some instances, we saw a, a, a doubling of the of the contacts that we received on the helpline increased by a hundred percent, and significantly, the proportion of contacts which related to mental health issues also increased significantly something like from 40% to 60% of contacts related to mental health. And alarmingly, um, uh, uh, the suicidality issues increased significantly by 50% as well. Any further questions for Jeff? One last one for one. Uh, the question, I believe, was uh, similar to an earlier question that Louis asked. Um, most rural children in schools don't have access to mobile phones either. Yeah, I, I um, um, so, so one of the things that I mean, it's it, it, it I mean, it's fundamentally very difficult because um, the two ways of connecting with these children are by mobile phone or by the fact that they attend school and if they attend school uh, then there is an opportunity for us to access them but we uh, we share a problem with many other social service agencies in that the last 10 percent of rural children are extremely difficult to access and whilst we do all we can to access them there are some limitations as you've obviously rightly pointed out in terms of no access to technology no access to connectivity and no access to a mobile phone makes it extremely difficult for any of our organisations to uh, access these young children. Sorry, I can't be more helpful on that. Right, any further questions for Jeff? Okay, Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity of talking to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, um, why don't we go Linda? Are you here? Where are you, Linda? I'll, st I'll stand here and remove my mask slightly, if that's okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm uh, the newly appointed chair of the Kaikoui Business Association. And um, a little bit of history, I cut the puppet back to 
I don't know what else to do apart from come to you. John. Yeah, good day. Good day, Liz. Uh, you have rung us and a few others with us, and it, it's, it's amazing that we sort of get in this deadlock, and yet it's a simple solution. So the question is, would, would it be okay, because you need to borrow, to actually have a, a lease uh, given to you now with a condition that, um, so it could be down, further down the track. I'm just looking at, at ways to get through the, the bypass. So the condition in the lease set within 12 months or within you know, 18 months, um, you will be purchasing the building. So the lease is concrete, concrete with that with that condition. Would that work for you? Wait, can you explain that again? Sorry. So, so in other words, you're given a lease, yep. but it has a condition in it yep. that you will fulfil your role. Oh yes. And and so you just we, we just put something in there that will supposedly satisfy council that uh, you know of its its desired outcome and yep. what you're actually saying. Yeah. So I'm just asking with that suit you and presumably would suit the uh, bank because now you have a signed lease, signed, delivered, but obviously some conditions that you have to meet. And I think every lease has got conditions you have to meet, so I can't see what the problem is. And we would be happy with that. Right. Yeah. Because that way we can Great. get the yeah. lease, purchase the premises and get to work. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of, I think, Rome, where people were going around in circles and I think soon after that Rome <laughs> collapsed. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Liz? I, I do. I, I have been following this slightly, but with, was council ever able to find the original no. lease? With, was it with Hokkien Accounting? <laughs> was it that far back? No, 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 it was. It was. It was something. Highway Park. No, no, no. And I think it was in 1946. I think. Um, I do have a copy somewhere. Um, and it was with the Okaiho Reserve Committee. Oh, okay. I think also all words all word to that effect. There was some, some kind of committee um, that uh, its natural successor is the in fact the Okaiho Hall Committee Association. And there is no lease. Yeah, no, no. there's no lease. It was and it was never it was never there was never anything in it. Yeah. Um, to transfer to anybody else. So I think I think one of the ladies who signed is still alive. So um, yeah, there we go. Thank you. We'll follow that through. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. You can um, join the legal team, Councillor Research. <laughs> I think they're already got people started. <laughs> Thank you. Dave. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Dave Adams, I'm the chair of the Hokianga, sorry, the South Hokianga War Memorial Hall Committee, which for want of a better word is known as the Afternoon Board. Um, I've come to ask for $4,098 for the purchase of an AED and a lockable cabinet to put it in, um, which will be situated outside the hall. What's brought this on is in the last 12 months we've had Two fatalities. Two, uh, two, what's the word I was Fatalities. Two fatalities. One, a guy um, who, David Lawrence, who was skating with his daughter in the war, um, and he had a heart attack and died on the scene. And another guy who was visiting the toilets, uh, and he died in the car park outside. Um, we don't know, but we suspect that an AED may have. Um, May have prevented those deaths. The 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 hall. I uh, know Louis and Alan and John have been there. I think you've been there, too, Mike. Is is right opposite the open only boat bank. Um, and we have a situation also where um, we have boaties that need an AED on occasion. Um, there is one. Um, in the Coast Guard boat, but the Coast Guard boat only gets called out in a real emergency. Um, and because there's the Hokianga Express boat that does the charters, he's out on water all the time. He doesn't have one. Um, so basically, uh, he'll, in the absence of the Coast Guard going out, he will do the Coast Guard work <coughs> unofficially. Um, and I'm, I'm part of Coast Guard, so I'm aware of that. 
So that's all I have, really. Any questions? You've all got all the information in front of you. John. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you get it, Dave. Uh, just, just obviously you've got the boat ramp, uh, you've got various other facilities where you're look, looking at locating it. So it seems to be in a very, um, when the tourists come back, um, it's a concentrated area. So I can see that the location is, yeah, is a tick. Um, can you just comment on how, once it's there, are there people available to be able to administer? Is it is it, too, is it technical or, or you know? No, it's not. The, the one we've um, the one that's been recommended, and we've done, it's taken us a year to do the research on all the ones, and we've had a look at all most of the models out there. Um, this is a an automatic one, hence the words AED. Um, it does talk to you. It does tell you what to do, um, but it's not normally the sort of thing that somebody like a first aider would be able to do it. And I, when I did my two-day first aid course, we were taught the use of an AED. I'm now doing my um, paramedic course, and they obviously they obviously do it as well. So there are people in the community that are um, emergency responder trained up to that level, and we do have people that are first aid trained. Whether somebody that hasn't done a first aid course would be able to do it or not, um, I don't know, John. I wouldn't think so, because they, there's a lot to do before you actually push the button. But there will be people available. <laughs> That's the intention. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to get people trained now. Yeah, Alan, um, the uh, the cost of the AED is is that four thousand and ninety eight alone. Yeah, that's the AED and the box and the, and box. the cabinet to put it in. We want a lockable cabinet to put it in and go on the outside of the building. Um, it'll have an 0800 number, like the 0800 poisons number, um, and they'll ring up and they'll get a code to open it. That's the plan. So the other 5K is for the... No, other... the other 5K was the work that the hall committee has done over the last couple of years with regard to the hall, and we haven't claimed for that at all um, in the last 12 months. Okay, thank you. Muko. Sure. So, oh, my question has been answered. Okay, so we're on that national register of AEDs. And yeah. You call yeah. up and then they'll tell you the code. So anyone in the community. Anybody can, can, yeah, anybody in the community can access it. Whether anybody in the community can use it is another question. But when you call um, triple one, they talk you through it anyway, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know in England that's exactly like that. They have they have telephone booths, repurposed telephone booths with AEDs in them. You break in, you get it, and then you ring up the number, and they actually talk you through it. Yes. You know, so somebody on the other end of the line, so you don't need to be a first aider. I'm just wondering whether or not those resources are available either on the end of that phone or one on one. Well, there are apps that, that when we did the first aid course, the initial one, um, there are two apps that you keep on the phone. One app shows you where the closest AED is, and the other one gives you shows you where the closest person is. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Louis. Louis. Yeah, being on the outside of the building, how secure would it be? Is it has it be vandalised or? Yeah, you know the whole thing you're better than I do. Right? Yeah. You know, we've we've gone for a a lockable, strong steel cabinet. But they have one. But it's like anything else, you know, the boys on the wharf, the emergency lifeboat, life boys on the wharf get get up vandalised. So. We, the next thing, totally out of the side of this, but the Hall Committee is, is actually looking at putting some cameras outside because that, that is a known area um, after hours for the hoodlums to congregate. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Thank you, okay. Dave. Right. Yeah. Good. Call your cuts on the line and another lockable box. Chris. Yeah, I've got Amy here as well. Is it same presentation? Same presentation, yes. Okay, right, yeah, cool. Both, so both as you see fit, cool. Thank you. Uh, through oh. the chair, um, I believe Chris and Amy have provided a presentation on this as well. Do you want that on the screen? Uh, yes, if you could just put up the, the plans of the wolf design. That'd be great. Kia ora tato, um, board chair and uh, board members. Um, I'm here to talk about the design uh, and replacement of a Mapabe wolf. Um, I'm happy to answer questions regarding the other four project wolf projects we've got in the Hakinga at the moment. 
if time permits, uh, Chair. Um, but if I can start with um, a Mapuri. Uh, this wharf suffered some damage in November last year, the 24th of November, when a, a 75 tonne steel fishing boat um, tied up to it in a, um, in a, in a storm event. And um, I know people here were aware of that event and, and the consequences of uh, that action was that the wharf was significantly damaged. It also, if I can point to the history of the wharf in the sense of its status at the time, there were several piles in that head of the wharf that were significantly damaged through worm, Toretto worm and, and structural damage as well. So there was a combination of, of, of issues there. Um, a maintenance issue or power replacement plus plus the damage done by this boat. So early in this year, we we applied um, for an insurance uh, a claim, which was accepted in April, and um, as of today, in fact, um, that claim has been um, accepted and, and there's been an, an allocation of insurance funds applied to that wharf, which is one of the first insurance claims I've had through for a. Uh, FNDC maritime asset in, in the last decade. So it's a really good result uh, for council and ratepayers in regards to having some response to that claim. Uh, the wharf, uh, a couple of the elements I'd like to talk to you about the wharf is the proposed design. The head of the wharf that has suffered the damage was replaced in about 2004-05 and was done with, at the time, hardwood. The reason they did hardwood was because it was the most durable wooden structure that, or timber structure that, of wood that they could have available at the time. There was lots of controversy around what it should be replaced with at the time, but it was regarded that the wharf was to be replaced in its timber form. Looking at the status of those piles some 16 years later, we were at the point where we were probably going to have to replace that, that section anyway, or a good chunk of it, because a lot of it had already been damaged by worm and the environment. So if you reflect on that in the sense that that, that, that investment made in 2004-05 was um, coming to its end and we were having to look at replacing it, the, the damage subsequent has just accelerated that process. So in our design considerations, we've said, was that an acceptable situation to go back with timber or do we look at alternative materials to rebuild the head of the wall? So we've decided that or considered that a concrete and a steel pile solution will provide a, the rate par with the best return. It's, it's one of the most exposed environments of any maritime asset in the district. Um, it takes that westerly storm event head on and it gets a really hard time. So we think these materials are the best solution in terms of a replacement. Um, we are designing for a hundred year life with these materials. So we're talking steel piles that are sleeved by with um, HDPE. So that takes away the corrosion element. Um, we're putting um, uh, steel and HDPE um, fendering, uh, stainless steel ladders, and a concrete headstock and concrete deck. Um, if I can just flick through to the next slide on the um, on the plans. Yeah, perhaps if we can go two slides in, maybe next one. So this is just a plan view and, a, um, and an elevation of the wharf as it's built now. Um, the top slide shows the end section um, that's, that's being considered for replacement. And if we go to the next slide, we start to see the detail of the section that we're looking to replace. Another design consideration outside of the materials is essentially the height of the wharf, the finish height of the deck. With sea level rise, that is quite real. The wharf is currently built at a height of 4.3 metres plus chart, um, above chart datum. Considering sea level rise and the hazard ma maps in our sea, we've assessed that this wharf needs to finish at a height of 
5.4, so a metre higher, to take it out of that storm event, that storm surge event, and the coming sea level rise. So yes, it's, it's a metre higher. So that does create a little bit of an issue when we're building one part, replacing one part of the wharf. So that end section you can see on this elevation here needs to ramp up from the timber section uh, that's shown to the left of that plan in front of you. So our plan there is to look at this design material and this design as a whole. And in time, when we come to replace the wharf, we've replaced the inner section, which still has a remaining life of around 10 to 15 years in it, we hope, we're expecting that we would continue this, this design all the way back to the shore in due course. So outside of that, the features of the wharf are, you know, obviously it's going to have um, ladders, stainless steel ladders, cleats and, and fendering. The most mo notable omission from this design at the moment is the intertidal steps that you have at the current head of the wharf now. So these are steps that, that go into the water, under the water at high tide and um, are partly submerged during low tide. Utility value is great because you can access it on the calm days. When you're using the head of the wharf, you can access the side of the wharf and get onto the steps. However, the issue with that is that they always remain slippery, they always remain dangerous, and they are subject to the most requests for service that we have in regards to wharfs. They are a health and safety hazard. There is only one set of intertidal steps left in the district, and that's at the wharf at Te Hapua and they are likely to be replaced as well for the same reason, that it is very hard to maintain these structurally because they are in, in the water, they out of the water, they grow algae, they get slippery. They also get hydraulic by the ocean all the time, so there's always um, boards popping off and, and fastenings that need to be replaced. We are recommending that they aren't replaced, but we're more than keen to have feedback as to what you think about that. In, in terms of, of what can be, well, what is the replacement solution for the intertidal steps is obviously the ladders on this structure, but obviously reflecting on the utility value of uh, Openoni Wharf and the pontoon that's there, which is, you know, obviously on alongside all tide um, facility not too far away. Uh, there are some issues with Okanoni in terms of that pontoon. It really needs to be bigger and heavier, so it's more, more stable in that water environment. It's quite spry. It was one of the first pontoons we put in the district in terms of maritime assets. That was concrete, and it, it's probably a little bit under spec for its, for its purpose at the moment. But I would, yeah, welcome feedback from the board when you're in regards to the, the steps. Uh, they can be designed in. Um, there would be different approach. There'd be more cost to achieving it. We probably look at a half step and make it out of um, H, um, uh, um, gridded um, plastic, if you like. Um, that's that that water can pass through, but not to the same structure and scale of, of the steps that are there. But uh, yeah, again, as I say, welcome feedback on that. Um, aesthetically, obviously the wharf head is going to look different. It's going to have those darker piles and you'll have the timber section uh, into the woods to land for the period of time that those piles are, um, are still uh, viable. As we move through the life cycle of the remaining asset, we'll, we'll look to um, replace those with timber sleeved which have a, have a life of around um, 50 years, um, rather than the 20 years life that we're getting out of just straight timber piles. Right, you have any late questions? Yeah, absolutely. Any questions? Louis? Yeah, I know this wharf. I know the people that use it. There's a lot of people that get bombing off it and 
and also fishing from it and things like that. The concern that I have is that sort of those stainless steel ladders, it's very hard to move fishing gear or whatever off the boats or whatever onto the wharf. I know they're probably trying up to the handle or whatever, but quite a few boats do just tie up there and go out for day trips and things like that. How, how, do, you, how do you address that situation? Um, again, we'll. As I've mentioned, would loot with this design without the steps, we would absolutely lose that utility function of being able to step outside the gunnel, over your gunnel, and straight onto a step. Admittedly, it would be slippery and you'd have to row for the right tide environment and no wave action, because a lot of those boats do have a driver and a, a driver of the boat, a driver of the trailer, they back in, the driver drops off, they go and hold off because it's too rough to get on the wharf. But when it is calm enough to get on the wharf, yes. We cannot replicate that with this design without putting steps in. Other than obviously we have the ladders there which are slippery and sometimes not suited to everyone's mobility. Um, so there is a lot of ut loss of utility value. We're matching that off against the health and safety issues that relate to intertidal steps and the slipperiness, which is very hard to administer. Uh, test of that slipperiness, I had a bad fall on those stairs one time. But uh, the, the, uh, is, is, it, is it a pontoon type arrangement at the end of that, or is it too, too rough? Yeah, far too rough for the, yeah, that environment there. The design requirements of uh, pontoons as well uh, are well documented and scheduled. There's um, significant wave considerations the fetch that deliver that significant way and we I mean you, obviously you can design any engineer will provide you a solution but um, the piles there would be something like a meter 1.2 meters in diameter there'd be many of them and there'd be a uh, very there'd be difficulty in getting an engineer to sign off a 50-year life of a concrete pontoon in that environment so it's just not just not viable I mean, so I'd like to carry on here. So, Middleton, you rang me eight months ago about a wharf, is this one? Um, so, I suggested you just simply let the, let the community know what you intended to do. Was there any feedback with regards to the intertidal steps when you did that? Uh, yes, if I can be frank about the two, the, the feedback that I think is most relevant, uh, the Harbour Warden. Um, uh, view that this wharf is always a challenge, it's in a challenging environment and perhaps is not the best place for a wharf and wouldn't miss it. Um, the Coast Guard were of the view that they would like to retain the steps if it was all possible, um, the instance being that they had somebody that they, they, it was easier to get them off on that on, via the steps. Yeah. Um, so that's a local consideration from the local okay. Coast Guard. Okay, so, so then I'll ask my question, which is the, the one of, what is the, what is the wharf used for? I mean, cause, because you're raising it a metre, okay, so already it's going to be more difficult for boats, and you take away the way people would get to for 99% you know, of the tide now, so what is the use of the wharf now at all? Uh, I mean, it's, it's used significantly for fishing, yep. okay. um, so it's very popular for that. It's, um, I mean, it's an amenity in the sense that people connect with the water, so it still have that functionality. It's uh, awful bombing. Yeah. And it's going to be a <laughs> metre higher for bombing, so it's going to be... <laughs> well, you can't, you can't get back on there, can you? <laughs> That's right, you can't. It's yeah. all back to shore. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite clearly, as I've, I've made the point um, as best I can, the, the decision is whether the board wants to support steps going back in, and 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 um, and, and, have, and consider that health and safety element, or whether they see that as an issue that's mitigated by, um, to some extent, not fully, because it can, can't replicate it other than put steps in by the ladders and the alternative use of open only. Um, in, in regards to Coast Guard, we, we actually do need that lower portion of the wharf there for um, loading injured people onto the wharf. And when the tide's inconvenient, if it's a low tide, 
you can't mount up onto that high part of the wharf. And then the other reason for Omapuri being uh, used as a dual end um, loading area for coast guard is when the open only side is too low to launch, they have to go to the Omapuri ramp to launch there. And the other thing is a, a fisherman or kids swimming or whatever are jumping off the wharf there, there's no way of getting safely back onto the wharf again. Okay, anyone? Yeah, um, thanks, Alan. Um, being locally, it's actually uh, nailed some of my concerns there, and, and that was, was great nick for me to hire. That's, that's fantastic, but for bombing, but uh, hey, there could be some risk, especially with the young, younger ones having to swim back to shore. And I do know there's a big rip that goes through there in, in the tidal movements. Um, so, and I think I asked the question when I said, have you considered a floating section? Um, that, so the only question you haven't answered was freeze park erosion. Have you done work on, which is, we you know it's on gains, and it's greater than what we mentioned at 0.7 metres, as everybody knows locally, per year of erosion. So have you done any work on uh, the effect of the bigger piles of paper and that may cause on, on erosion positively or negatively? So that's, that's one question. Um, uh, we've done a coastal hazards report with the structure, but largely the effect of the larger piles and the sea don't, any, don't seem to have a correlation with the effects that are occurring shore-based, which are mainly, you know, obviously uh, tide and, um, and, and storm events that are taking that, that issue with Priest Park. We haven't extended our interest in regards to the abutment um, either in that sense. So, Mr. Chair, I, um, um, a radical thing would be to look at a, a large tidal structure that's generating electricity out there, so it's and floating, and we can do a dual purpose and power the, uh, the local hotel. To make an income producing asset, John. And reduce the wave action and increase power. So, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just carry on. Uh, I'm going back to my question, Joe Spinney. So, you've got a whole bunch of people, or a whole bunch of interested parties who are saying we need the steps. Um, then, the, as I understand, the only reason you wouldn't do it is because it's hard to make it not slippery and add extra cost, I guess. Additional cost, and yeah, most certainly the health and safety aspects of it. So, um, cleaning and, and making sure that they're non slippery. Um, okay. And, and, and have, you, have, you, have you priced that up? I mean, do you know what that would be? You know, that, that cost. I'm just thinking because what we've got here is we've got a, um, a plan without, a reason for not, but no cost for doing so, and yet we've got a whole bunch of good reasons for doing so. So, do you know what it would, what, what would be the additional cost to put in the intertidal steps and to keep them serviceable? Um, it's about $210,000. Put them in. Mm. Yeah, and per year to keep them serviceable? Uh, if we don't make them timber, and I'd be recommending that they're not timber, that, that there'll be stainless steel strappings to piles for the stringers, and that the um, the steps are the um, compressed um, fiberglass mesh. Um, you know, that, that there'd be regular, probably, um, on the same cycle as the ramps, which are cleaned every six to eight weeks, it would be on the same cycle. We'd have to go and clean those steps. Okay. So but it wouldn't. Uh, can I suggest that cleaning them wouldn't fully mitigate the risks of people slipping, obviously, because they're still going to be wet. Can you put signs on the steps saying "Sea life don't land here or don't live here"? <laughs> 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 we can certainly do that. Um, encourage. I mean, it would be, you know, there's certainly um, an opportunity to pre present steps as is and, 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 and council to provide uh, references to the risks associated with entering onto those steps. And I think that would be a bare minimum requirement that council would need to put in play to mitigate its liability of creating an unsafe structure. And do you know what kind of injuries, if any, were there before? Due to the <laughs> 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 steps anywhere, injuries. Oh, 
regular. We've had okay. yeah, yeah. And several um, and quite damaging ones. A Tapa one, um, yeah, fell between the steps, grazed all through his leg, right, broke his leg and grazed right through his shin. Um, so yeah, they are. Yeah, those are the timber ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one more question. Is there going to be a light at the end of the walk? Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Took a lot of effort to get one there. Great. I think that's all, Chris. Thank you very much. I'll leave a set of these six copies of the plans here, the full set. So if anybody would like to take a set, feel free. And is it possible to retrofit? I mean, if, if you've put this thing up as it's currently designed, is there anything, if, and, but, uh, versus if we got you to do it with steps, is there any substantial change to the walk? I mean, if, 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 if in a year's time we realise what a big thing by letting you build this about as hard as steps, is it irreversible? No, it's not irreversible. Okay, okay. That would be an extension on the second side, so extra piles. Extra piles out. But you could put those in there now, which allows for the easier <laughs> Um, and, and you've seen right through me. Um, you'll see these piles that are on the other side there. We're suggesting they're fender piles for when that wharf does get approached by larger vessels. We're not, um, that, that, that potentially those two piles could form a part of the structure for future steps. Okay, so given that, given that we're raising the wharf by a metre, and given there's other sales steps, what larger vessels? I mean, why would they approach the wharf? Is that is it to tie up or to? Because well, they wouldn't be transport. They wouldn't be trans. They wouldn't be taking anything from the boats on the land onto the wharf, would they? Or do they bring cranes on? Or what do they do? What? Why would anyone tie up there? Um, again, just refuse from storms mainly, or okay. uh, or are not prepared to put um, put anchor down or travel up the harbour. So, I think it's just uh, yeah, propensity of some. Itinerant fishing boats predominantly that might might do that, and and this was a classic example with the Hairi, okay. um, who approached the wharf in, in conditions a good skipper would never put a vessel like that alongside a, a wharf structure like that normally, but you've got you know when you're in a storm of being they're taking refuge, um, there's very little control you have over that situation. Okay, and I guess all the boats coming from Fiji at this time might. <laughs> Quite right, likely land on the other coast. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much. Thank you. And Anna. Oh. Anna Hermaya, are you with us? She was there a moment ago. Kia ora. Kia ora. Okay, it's your turn, Anna. Um, is Jeanette there? Yes, I am. Jeanette is online, Anna. Um, did you want to lead this, Jeanette? Uh, yes, I can. I can lead it. Uh, yeah, I can. Chair, sorry, sorry, Jeanette. Through the chair, we're not discussing the report at the moment, so um, uh, you're welcome to hang on in the meeting, Jeanette, and let Anna do her talking now during public forum. Thank you. Uh, okay. I was really just coming on to Afi the report. Um, so. Oh, okay, Anna. Yeah. Uh, why don't we why don't we give you a call? I mean the report's not gonna be for a little while. Oh, okay. Um, so so why why don't we give you a yell back? That sounds great. And then, then we'll do this part with the report. How's that? Sounds perfect. Okay, thanks. Okay. Kaki dear. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll we'll slip straight back into the meeting. Um and we're going to because of staff issues with sickness and so forth. We're going to go straight to the public excluders section with regard to um, Kohu Kohu Reserve or Kohu Kohu Land. Um, so 
what I'll do first yeah, is we will pass the publicly excluded resolution. Just one moment, I'll put it on screen for you. Okay, so I'll move that the public be excluded from the following parts of the proceedings of this meeting. Um, the do we need to read the whole lot? Okay, so I'm going to take I'm going to take the resolution as read uh, on page 128. Um, but basically, there are good reasons for withholding um, information, including the withholding information necessary to enable or cancel or carry on without prejudice or disadvantage negotiations, including commercial and industrial negotiations. So, do I have a second on that? Yep. Okay. Um, any, any, I guess, any dissenting views? All those in favour? Carry. That's okay. We just had passed the permit exclusion motion.
Well, how many cases today? Why have they come out yet? Not quite. Okay, let's start this. Okay, so what? Okay, so next item the agenda item 5.1 previous uh, the confirmation of previous minutes. Are there any corrections to be had? No? Okay, in that case I'll just put the motion that the Kaikai Hokianga Community Board confirms the minutes of their meeting held on the 4th of August. A true and correct record. All those in favour? Aye. Uh, against? Okay, it's carried. How do you say that word in the, in the report that's like prima facie or something? Prima facie? Which, prima facie. Which, 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 which way is that? Uh, it's in the background of that. Oh, it's the, maybe the first time I've ever properly read um, this stuff. That's <laughs> the first time I noticed. The minutes of these proceedings do be inserted indicated as prescribed by local authority are. Prima facie. Is it a prima facie or? Prima facie. Prima facie. Yeah. I just announced. Yeah. Okay. Item six point one. Koko. Sorry, the Hokianga Spray Committee. A request for additional community representatives. Do I have a motion, please? Yeah, Louis Moose of the Kaikai Hokianga Community Board approves the appointment of Peter Reed and Lorraine Royal to the Hokianga Spray Committee as a community representative. Is that the one? Yep. Okay. Just the top one. That's A. You just what A? That's what I'm hearing. Do, do, do no, no, all that. That's, that's there's three recommendations here. Yeah, yeah. Just assume you mean the first one. Yeah, I've got the first one. Okay, do I have a second for that? Yeah, okay, yeah, right. right. Thank one you. That's a member of the usage. They have point two to the area. Okay, so Louis, do you want to speak to that? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, they, they're not always going to be at the meeting, and the reason they want more people was so that some of them don't necessarily have to come to the meeting. That's cool, yep. Okay, anybody wish to speak against this? If you wanted to say something. Oh, Emma, do you want to speak against it? Yeah. Okay. Not, not against it, but yeah, the yes. voting process, if there's four of them and two members from the community board, can they outvote us? My yeah. concern, this is a Hukianga Spring Committee. It is not a Rawani Spring Committee. They have their own meetings and they can invite anyone. But the fact is, should we actually extend it to other communities within Hukianga? Originally, the idea was to do with Rawani and then look at extending it at a future date. Yeah, so what are we going to do about that? If we already have four there, and one is husband and wife. They can always be changed in a meeting, I guess. What if they don't want to come home? You know, I think we need to be extremely careful about this, because we, it is Hokianga, and Hokianga just does not um, represent Rauni. But, you know, there are other areas as well. Yep, I'm aware of that. Like, like at the meeting, it was agreed that those two people, those two people come on at that meeting with the idea. So I think all we can do is move. Oh, I have a little point then. I think they came in, but they didn't have voting rights, what I understood. Well, they... I, I'm not sure I'd like to go to a meeting in... Yeah, yeah, you were at the, you were at the, at the beginning, and then I left to go to the hospital. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the specific purpose, even though it's called the Hawking House Spray Committee, the committee will, with, with, with regard to herbicide spraying in and around Rawani. Yeah. Okay, so it's a specifically Rawani, even though it says Hawking yeah. it's specifically Rawani. And when we need, and we we just need to be cognizant of that. So, 
So I mean, they're, they're not there to 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 represent the Greater Hokianga. They're not there to to talk about Hokianga's brain. They're there to talk about Rawani's brain. It's just that they've chosen that name. That's all. Well, we chose that name. We chose that name because we thought maybe in the future we could extend. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm judging it on. Should we extend it to other communities? Well. That's not it. I mean, I don't know that that's our choice. I mean, that's, that's the committee's choice. So, um, and you're on the, you're you're all on the committee. So, um, the committee made that decision. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they they wish to have two more people, and the motion is that we have two more people. Okay. You don't want you don't want two more people. Okay. Cool. I'll do one 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 other. And you 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 can see it, Alan, that they are going to be outvoted. Yeah, it's more about the voting process more than anything else. There's we only have five about the community board. Yeah. Me, oh, there is? Yeah, me, yeah. you, Mike, and Emma, we're all yeah. on that. And John. John Fusich. Yeah. So there's five. And does it matter? I mean... And it's their community. Yeah, yeah. it's their community. They're not, they're not having a problem with that. Okay. <laughs> Through the chair, if there were five community board members present at the time of a vote for the Hook and Spray Committee, then there would be no issue. If there were only four and four, then you may be. There would be an issue. Okay, so remember the, the, the tenets of democracy is it requires a majority to make a motion. The four and four would be lost, that's the first thing. The second thing is, it's their community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is their, yeah. it's their work. It's what kind of delegations is there? No. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do, oh, sorry, good. sorry, through the chair, I do oh, recall. Sorry, through the chair, I do recall at the last Hokianga Spray Committee meeting that not only did they request uh, the additional two, which couldn't be decided on on that day, it had to come back to the community board. And the second thing they did ask for with, with the addition of those four members was whether or not there would be remuneration for them. That was my that was my question. Yeah. It wasn't them. It was their question. Lorraine was, asked it. What did she? Yes. And you wish to follow it up. Um, okay, so it is quite clear from the council on that, on that question, it's quite clear from a council discussion on the day that there would not be any remuneration for community board committees um, for the purpose yeah, because they are advocates for the community. Yep. Um, however, um, I think if, if we wish to deal with their expenses, um, then I think that's probably a, a strategic decision that we can use our grant money for. Um, you know, our, 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 our local grant money or our local money. I mean, that's... Why? What are their expenses? Travel. Travel. I mean, if, if, if we get them to travel here, then there's an expense, there's a travel expense back and forth. You just said it's their community. If they want to fly for it, then they'll drive here. That's right. If they really want to be here, they'll be here anyway. I mean, if they're here too, because they anyway. have remuneration, then... Yeah. Uh, there is no remuneration. Okay, so um, look, we can discuss that. And today's discussion is not that. Um, so, um, so all those. Sorry, is there anyone who okay, wishes to talk more to this motion? Okay. No? Sorry. How, how do I put this? Um, I this? Isn't it a conflict of interest to have a husband and wife? Oh, we should the husband. No. I no, I mean, no, I don't think it's a conflict of interest. Like, like, they've both got very strong views on things. Um, okay, they work together. They work together as a team. And they're, and they're both. This is we're talking about John and Cat. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, 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 they know their stuff. They're both experts. Yeah, yeah, they do know their stuff. Yeah. And having a granddaughter and grandfather on the community board, that must have been a conflict. That was. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, lucky we don't share the same news. I think even I think even having a grandfather come into public forum would probably a conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, you should yeah, leave the yeah. link. I mean, he, he's always been interested in what was your grandfather reading. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And and he's been going older than anybody else. Back on, back on. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Right. Okay. Live, uh, here we are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. Fast and loose. Okay, all those in favour of the motion? Aye. Aye. Anybody Aye. against? Carrie. Were you against? 
Okay, uh, we, is, is Ryan here? No, not yet. Is Ryan there? One moment, I'm just checking. Oh, where are we going? Rogue No, no, Ryan. Does Ryan really want to speak? He, he, he does. He does? Okay, let's do him. So. Because he's next. Before we leave, I thought bank, it, are we was planning to have one? After the next meeting? Sorry? Are we planning to have another spraying committee meeting? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle that at the end of the, end of the day. I mean, end of the meeting, because we've got to tackle it at dates and times. So, through the chair? Yeah. We moved um, 6.1a. That was moved by, but we had a moved B and C. It was one or the other. Well, they were options, did Yeah. Go Okay. Okay, so does anybody wish me to explain? No. No? It's all right. Put three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 6.2, Kotu Mangaroa Picnic Area Encroachment. Oh. Do I have one? Oh, there's one now. Okay, so um, no, 6.2, do I have a motion on that, please? That's probably... Alan, do you want to go there? Yeah. Okay. Um, Alan moves that the Kaikei Hokkei Community Board engage with the Kaitiaki of Kotu Mangaroa Picnic Area to formalise a Kaitiaki agreement for the lawful, lawful use of the area as a campground and engage with Kaitiaki to approve to obtain the necessary consent on the Resource Management Act, Local Government Act, and Health Act to facilitate the lawful use of the area as a campground. Do I have a second, no, second. Louis seconds. Right, okay. Um, away you go, Alan. Mm -hmm. But, well, historically they've used that area for quite a long time for a campground um, and it encroaches down onto the beach, drives down onto the stone um, shelf and people use it for launching boats from there and fishing from the point. But um, in the past 10 to 15 years it's been used for a picnic area and camper, campers. Whether, whether the campground was a legitimate one or not, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah like, we, we need an area like that. We, we've just lost the camping ground at Open Amy, and uh, I don't think it's going to reopen as a camping ground again. Uh, the other thing is in the past when we've had discussions of, of, with the boat trailers, and things like that. We, we have looked at the possibility of using that, making that bit a better boat ramp and using that road reserve area for parking cars and trailers. You know, like, 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 so there's a lot of area there that we could park a lot of cars and trailers instead of plumbing up the streets in Okanoni and Amapri and, and causing the safety issues at Okanoni when people are trying to launch their boats there. So, you know, there's an option for that as well. I don't know how, how that will run with the community up there. They may not be in favour of that. They're probably unlikely they will be in favour of that, but there are options there. And But I think the people that have been managing the camping area, it was set up originally for, uh, for the Motor Home Association, they're a member of that, yeah. and they used to go and park their buses and things like that there, but it's gone into something a little bit more. And and if we if we don't let this go, if this doesn't go ahead, then uh, it's, and if we try and take it out of the hand of the owners, well, at the end, out of the hands of the people who are using it. And we've got an issue that's going to happen. It's going to probably be uh, what was written previously, occupation of the land. And, and as well as what I mentioned in the report, is that, that, that sort of the council is no way council 
will maintain it to the level that it's maintained at all. They probably wouldn't maintain it at all, and it would just become a, another rough area. So I think, you know, I think, yeah, let's look at ways of trying to get this formalised in some way so that it can be okay. used. Cool. Is there anybody wishes to speak against this? No? Okay, we'll just go straight to the vote then. Um, there's one, there's a slight error, Totu Manaroa is Totu Monero, it means one tree point. So there's a spelling mistake? Mm. Any spelling? Monero, M-O-N-G-E-R-O. Oh, yeah. oh, they've got the extra A there. Mm. Now they've got Mangaroa or something like that. Mangaroa. Yeah. 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 Kotu is actually put. That means put. So it's Mongero, not Mangero? No. It's Kotu Mongero. Okay. I'm going to say Mangero. Is that right? M-O-N-G-E-R-O. Yeah. It's interesting to note at one stage, the last time the community Man, dealt with it about seven or eight years ago, Man. Uh, Man. there was an opposition Man. to it because there was uh, it was taking money away from the legitimate camping ground, no, Okay, yeah. It was with Sid Matthews. Yeah, anyway. Sid Matthews. Okay, so uh, unless there's somebody who really wants to be heard, I'm going to put it to the vote. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so the motion is that the Kaitai Hokianga Community Board engage with the Kaitiaki of Totu. I'm going to use this word here, um, Mangaroa here, just because it's the way it's done, it can be yeah. changed later. Picnic area to formalise a Kaitiaki agreement for lawful use of the area of the campground and engage with Kaitiaki to obtain the necessary consent from the Resource Management Act, Local Government Act, Health Act, and still the lawful use of the area of the campground. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Carried. Okay, right. Item 6.3, road naming at 16 Rousel Heights. Um, we have the applicant online here, I think. We do. Ryan is back with us. Ryan, are you there? Yeah, kia ora team. I'm here. Okay, right. I'll give you five minutes, Ryan. Away you go. Yep. Hold on. I'll just move. Give me 30 seconds. Hold on. Um, has everyone got the information in front of them? Yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. So, yeah, so just attending today, thanks to you, just to um, uh, bring my case across, it's basically a resource consent application to subdivide um, a property 16 Russell Heights, and there's two dwellings already there. It's just a simple um, straight line subdivision. All the works have been completed, um, already completed the 223 certificate, uh, which is the first step, and um, everything has been completed for the 224C, other than um, purchasing a council road sign um, with the approval of the community board. So really, that's, um, that's what the, the issue is about. Um, so yeah, any I've provided some road names. Um, so just any questions? Any questions for Ryan? Okay, Ryan, thank you. Um, you're welcome to stay on the line as we discuss. Sorry, Mokos Khan. Tudor, I um I wondered if you spoke Spanish, why you chose a um, a Spanish name for the yeah. street. <laughs> No, no, no. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, but yeah, no, just uh, that road name was just has to meet the certain council requirements. With, um, so that just sort of fitted in one that the neighbours agreed on, other than one neighbour. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, right. So let's put this to um, a motion and then we'll get Adam on the line who does road naming. Okay, so does someone wish to put their name to this motion? I don't have a question. Yeah? Sorry. Just in the report, possible implications for Māori and the compliance part, that was just left blank. Like it didn't say no implications or anything like that. 
Okay, so you're not available. Um, so she can't answer that question, I'm afraid. Can it just be picked up to be noted? Okay, cool. Okay, do I have a motion? A move a move or a motion? Do you want to do it, Kelly? Nah, because I don't like the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good choice, though. Okay, anybody? Okay, I'll move then. Um, I move the Tango Hook and Community Board pursuant to Council's road naming property addressing policy 2125. Name private right away, Buena. Mr. 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 Ryan, Mr. Ryan, currently addressed at 16 rounds of lights. Yes. Do I have a second then? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, right. Um, I'm moving this to get it on the um, on the board so we can discuss. So, Ara, are you there? Through the chair, yes. I'm here. Okay, so I've spoken to Ryan offline. And it just, it, 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 he wasn't able to answer my question. The question was, why does this have to have a name at all? And, and, and please don't answer, it's on his resource consent application because, I mean, the, the, you know, the fact that it's on his resource consent application means that it's somewhere else. So what, what is the requirement here and why? So the reason for road naming is for emergency services to be able to locate properties to attend to incidents. Oh, so hang on, hang on, back up, back up, back up, okay. We understand why names, so roads have names. That goes without saying, right? I, mean, it's where, I know I've been to Japan where roads don't have names and it's like a horrendous place. So we understand why roads have names. My question was, is why does this, why does this driveway have to have a name? That, uh, I only have the same answer. But it didn't have a name until he wanted to put one extra house on it. Through the resource consent. So that's a question for the consenting team and I don't have an answer for that. Roading, roading has just gone through the procedure of road naming policy, vetted it for compliance and meeting the requirements. Okay, so and we've got a chicken and egg. And it's part okay. of the process. Yeah, so he's completely. Okay, he's required to have a name because of the require. Excellent, thank you. Right, any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, does that also then become the legal road for those sections on the other side of the road and before those sections? Yeah, I don't know. But no, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a. Um, it's not a council road. It just requires no, a council name. No, but like sort of. Section 10, Section 8, Section 7, Section 9, they're, they're all part of that road. So is that that road yeah, driveway yeah, going to service those properties as well? Number yes, one. sure. Possibly, and there was the numbers there, that could be the answer with the number of uh, houses that are going there. But, I, but, I, but I, don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm presuming. That's right, yeah. so that's what I'm saying, possibly. Okay, Ryan, are you there? Um, yep, I'm here. Yep. Okay, so if we don't do this today, have the council said, because you you wish the titles to be issued, is that right? Correct, yeah, so all the works have been done except this, and the only hold up for title issuing is this. Okay, and have, they, have the council said to you that the titles will be issued upon approval of the name? Basically, because so condition. The resource, the resource consent, as you as as you provided it, merely says that you have to provide the names. It doesn't require the names to be approved, right? For for your title issues. So my question is, is they are they holding you up pending us? Correct. Yeah. So condition um, in the resource consent condition three, um, which is section two two three. Um, I've already received that, that's been completed, and that was just to provide uh, names to the community board. So I've already yep. done that. I've actually received that certificate. Section yep. uh, 224C, which is what I'm waiting on, there's a uh, number, number E, pay to council yep. the cost of purchasing and installing a road name, etc. Um, that is the only condition I have yet to meet, and that is dependent on, uh, you know, the community board uh, approving that road name. 
Okay, cool. So, okay, so, so, so us approving it is a condition of the subdivision. Yes, well, essentially, yep, because I can't install a road name as per condition E until I have a name. Um, but they, whether they, they, I and I don't. Okay, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to get, get to the bottom of this here, Ryan. So the, the condition is that you pay the council the cost of. It doesn't just say that you have to install it. It's just that you've got, you've got to pay the cost of. Um, that's okay. Look, I mean, it, it seems to be rather roundabout. Well, can you all just carry on here? Thanks, Ryan. Right. Any other questions? Yep. Do we as a council have um, like a sheet naming policy or preferred, like I know in some areas, for example, like in um, Lower Hutt City, they named the street and then reverse the community would reverse that decision or like a Māori name, for example. I, I would prefer a Māori name over a Spanish name, even though I can hold a conversation to finish, to be honest. But like looking at the area, like we don't really have any flow with our names anyway. Like the, in that space there, the names are all over the place anyway. So if this is the name he wants for this, then I'm going to vote for it because it's going to happen. But I just wanted to know if we had something like this to guide us. Or, any preferences? Yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, I th like other councils or community boards do. I don't think we do. There's, there's something about. Why do we all want a community board? That was it. Maybe something for me to ask. Um, I guess my only my only comment here, and it has nothing to do with Ryan's um, application, but more to do with um, the people who could speak to this report not being here and not understanding, um, so and being unavailable. So um, look, I, I'm just disappointed in that. Um, I know Aram, you're here and you you can speak generally, but. Um, the answer to the question, why is a name required uh, to be answered with, it's just required, um, is kind of not what I expected. So, um, all right, okay, so anybody else have any questions? Um, Mike, Chair? Yep. Sorry, is that you right? Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, um, as we discussed, like, ultimately I would prefer that the same road name that we use of Ralph and Heights remains, but it's simply a condition of the uh, resource consent. And I do note that condition E does say, um, pay the council the cost of purchasing and installing a road name sign. So that would suggest that I have to install it as well. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, I, I, think, it's, I, think, it's, I think I agree with you. It's poorly worded and ambiguous. Um, and given that you would rather not and your neighbours would rather not, it seems rather an imposition um, to require it. And, that, and I, was, I was more concerned about... I mean, we, we're going to pass it here, right? So that you can get on with your life, I imagine. Um, but I'm disappointed in the whole process in that, you know, nobody's really given any answers or, or satisfied you, at least, as to why it's got to have a road name, right? And we've, we've got, we've got yeah, right exactly. You've got, to, yep. you've got to have a road name because the resource consent requires it. Um, but that doesn't yep. answer why yep. the resource consent requires it, right? Um, so okay, I think right. it's because in the district plan, once you have over five um, titles on a private right of way, there's just a, a, a note there that it has to be named. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, if, you, if you've got that information, that's what we wanted. Excellent, thank you. Okay, right, any other questions, comments? All right, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Okay, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 6.4 upgrade Memorial Park. Are you online? Are you, Anna? Something on fire? Yeah, yeah it's just me. Get up, Thanks. Oh, so for the we can smoke. Yeah. What's the one? Yeah, it's you, Jackie. Well, right, I want to sit down. I can't smoke. I know it's online. Okay, Anna, you're online. Jeanette's online. Okay, so. Is it at the front? 
Does anybody have any questions of Jeanette or Anna before I record the motion? Almost uh, Andrew. Um, we are at the outdoor power supply. On your plan. Um, so where are you referring to? No, we can't hear you, Jeanette. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Um, so exactly where are you referring to? Was that Kelly, sorry? Yeah, um, anywhere on the plan. So there are, are locations around the park that have lighting and power su supply can be um, drawn from any of those locations with approval, obviously. So, so you're saying that there is a, there will be an outlet on the bottom of every light pole, is that right? No, no, no. It's it depends on where you're wanting the power supply. Um, it was a bit of a Would general you? question, so I was just looking for a bit more um, clarification on where you were wanting a power supply located. Hey, hang on a minute, Jenny. We're we're on fire here somewhere. So you just hold that. Have a seat. We've got staff investigating as we Smells like mum. Um, Electronic machine, it smells like a computer. Yeah, and that's one of the keys. The keys of stuff, but. Everybody feel the computers? It's not. 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 It's I don't know where it's supposed to be. I just would have assumed that it was already in here. Um, I haven't done the master plan. Um, Anna might be able to answer um, that. We are looking for power supplies around the barbecue, so we will be putting connections in there. So there's there, two barbecues. Is there something specifically, Kelly, you want power for? Um, yeah, events. And I'm sure we've already had this conversation. <laughs> so you say you're gonna you you can possibly put them on every light bulb and you are gonna put them by barbecues, but it's not actually in here. No, I didn't say we were so gonna put it on. I don't want to see us get down this far and then suddenly they're gonna have a basketball um thing and then they're still gonna have to run a power cord from SIF's office to run uh, speaker. So just through the chair, um, we haven't allowed for power points on uh, the light poles. What I said was that we can connect to the power supply from those light from those lighting supplies with approval. But as at this point, and I haven't been privy to previous conversations about power supply in the park, um, I don't, there isn't anything shown at this point in time. But we will be putting power supply to the barbecues, which are shown to the left of the play area. So, thinking as an electrical engineer, Jeanette. Yes. Okay, if you attach a power point to a light bulb, with approval, of course. Okay. Um, and you wish to draw more power than the cable that was laid in the ground for the light, then you are not going to be able to. And I can imagine that if you drove a truck onto the lawn and decided to have an event with sound systems and whatever, you would be drawing more power than the cable to the light would allow. So to say we can do it in retro, retroactively, doesn't make sense to me. You would have to decide right now, while you've got the ground open, to put more and bigger cable in for power supplies than you would for lights. Yes, we probably would. What I was suggesting that there is power going to the lights and we would be able to possibly be able to run 
power from those cables, not from the lights, from the cables to wherever a power supply was required. Um, at this point in time, um, I'm not sure where you're talking, but and I'm not an electrical engineer. We, looking at the plan as it stands, we would more than likely need to um, engage an electrical engineer to do that assessment for us. I can't say where we're going to put a power supply. I haven't been privy to those conversations. I don't know whether Anna has been involved in those. So, yeah, Kelly, yeah, sorry, you may have mentioned it at the last one. So, so we haven't done an electrical plan or anything like that. Um, like um, Jeanette said, there there is power to the park. So we can go um, have a look, like it could come from the back of the whare paku or it could go somewhere near the lights are. So, I mean, yeah, we can look into that and add it to the plan. Any more questions coming? No, that'll be enough. Okay, right. Yep, go. Kia ora, Kia ora, Jeanette, Kia ora, Um, my, oh, I've got more, I've got a question on page 51, the pump track. Um, oh, for starters, it's exciting to see progress in this space from when we, as a community, will pay to get the plan finished and then we're actually potentially going to see it realised while we're in office at the same time. It's pretty cool. Um, I've, I've got questions about the funding pools that we're using in this space though. But one specific question is the pump track on page 51. Um, it says that that's funded from the streetscapes budget. Um, I was wondering how the pump track became a part of the streetscapes budget. And I just wanted to make sure I know that that's a Kaikuhi streetscapes budget. And I want to make sure that the Moirua pump track, because this is like a two for one deal from LTP from memory, isn't also coming from our budget, if that is the one that it's coming from. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Yep. Yep. So, in answer to that, um, I think Anna can speak to that. She, I wasn't um, involved in any of the pump track discussions earlier. So, maybe Anna can speak to that one. So, I mean, there. Where the pump track originated from was um, the Limbar Park project master plan, um, and that project was identified through that process. Um, and we got some initial costs done, um, and um, there was some left over. I'm not sure where what the pockets of funding are, but there was some money that we thought would be good to put to the pump track. I'm not sure which one it's sitting under. Yes, what, what I'm asking this for is the pump track came through as a part of LTP and Moira's pump track got added to this. Um, I didn't know that that was going to get tagged to Streetscapes. I thought that would be a different funding pool for that and that Streetscapes should be for the full total amount for Streetscapes shouldn't have the pump track taken off it. And also, I want, to, I want assurance that Moira was isn't coming from that budget as well, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Who, who made the decision that it comes out of streets? Don't know. Okay, here's a question for you then, Anna, um, and Anna guess Jeanette, is you've done, and, and, we, and we gave you the job of prioritising. Okay, we basically said, you know, amongst yourselves, prioritise what's priority. Okay, and on, and on this... And I think this is where um, Mukul's going. And on here, um, we've got a pump track. What, and, and we weren't quite sure that this should come out of streetscaping money. So what has been deprioritized in favor? What, what, what does the pump track take priority over? Anything? And you know, on your greater plan, Anna? So I guess there's been two projects alongside each other. So one was the Memorial Park development. Um, and one was the pump track. Um, and so I guess now that once we did that pricing, um, we felt the, like the pump track was something that could be done um, first as the easiest project and an exciting project that the community has, they wanted. Um, and then parts of the Memorial Park is a secondary alongside that. Okay. So I didn't Can I just... 
sorry, through the chair, can I just add to that? Anna's also done consultation out in the community, and there is there was a need um, shown for this pump track to get to get the children off the streets with the kids that we've had riding around the streets of Kaikou here, and just to give them somewhere to go. So that was yep, just okay. another um, reason. Yep. Who decided how yeah. it's going to be paid for? That's right. Mokul didn't say it wasn't needed. We all agree it's needed. Okay, so your answer was to a different question. Mokul's answer, what well, Mokul's question was, okay, he didn't realise when, when they discussed pump tracks at council, okay, it, it, he doesn't remember it being made clear that it was out of the street state budget. In other words, he wasn't made it wasn't made clear to him that by choosing a pump track, something else wouldn't get done. Okay, and that's his question, because if, if we're taking it out of the streetscape money, then something else is not getting done with that money. Whereas he didn't he didn't see it that way when oh, end. it was an end rather than all. So all the information that I was given was that we have the Streetscape upgrade budget, which is where um, Anna was working her master plan from. And um, I may have wrongly assigned Streetscape budget to it, and I, I will take my hat off to that. Um, and we will find we will look for further extra funding for that. Um, at the moment, I'm not sure where you're talking, Moko, in the LTP for funding for the um, pump tracks. Um, Moida was certainly wouldn't come. Moida was certain, certainly wouldn't come out of this budget because this is um, Kaikohe only. Yeah, so what I'm saying is what budget is Moida was coming out of because Kaikohe's pump track should come out of that corresponding budget. That's right. Kaikohe, <laughs> from that same pool. No, That's right. Because Moida, we did they need them and Kaitai, did that Kaitai get one too? Kaitai has the... Yeah, well, Kaitai has a street scale budget, but Moida probably doesn't. So where did Moida get their money through the pump track? That's what he does. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've, had, we've had two... Not answer so far, Jeanette. I'm sure you've got another not yep. answer for us in a minute. That's cool. You pull it um, no, out. well, I can go away. I can go away and and do some research on research on where these are to be funded from. Sorry if I don't have the exact answer for you today. I thought that this is where it was from, and I've got that wrong. I put my hand up to that. Thank well, you, Jenny. I would very much prefer Anna to have that money that would be from streetscapes for the pump track to do other cool things with, and yeah. the pump track comes from pump the pump track pool. Yeah, know. yeah. I was picked up on that. When I heard it. Well, you're happy with the um, playground, Anna? Sorry? You're happy with the playground? It's your spec? It's been... Um, a quick process. Um, yeah, we are happy within the budget constraints that were given. Is that the answer you would have given if I was sitting across you from a coffee and nobody else was listening? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just um, add to that as well through the chair? Um, we've had um, quite a few conversations with Marita and Anna over the design of the playground, and we've gone backwards and forwards quite a few times. There are things that we have had to take out because of budget constraints. Um, we only have a finite budget. We put this this together um, with... Um, there was a tender process put through for Kitty Kitty Domain and Tehiku revitalisation for playgrounds, and it was opportune for us to piggyback onto the back of that to get um, a new a new playground for Kaiko here as well to take advantage of what they were offering, and that's okay, that's Jeanette, why it sort okay. of moved quite quickly. Jeanette, you you haven't been here in this conversation for very long, so let me run run it past you, okay? Well, this all started when we said we didn't want engineers designing Memorial Park. Okay, so what we do is we turn around and we say, is, is there somebody in the community who understands the community, can understand the park, and, and, and can give what give a design element or a design flair to this park? In other words, we wanted effectively the council to follow their lead, okay, which is where Arda came in. And so, and, and, and it almost immediately with that being done, we find out there was a whole bunch of concrete um, picnic tables put on Memorial Park. So, I mean, Obviously, we was a false start, but hey-ho. And, and now what I'm getting the impression, and you can, both of you can tell me that I'm wrong, okay? I get the impression that there was an opportunity because Kerry, Kerry and Kaitai were purchasing 
um, uh, playgrounds, okay, to make this a thing. Look at me, look at me, I've, I've made a good deal. Here's a playground, make sure it's included, Anna. Okay, I don't want that to have been the case. Okay, in other words, I don't want Anna to be backing into a corner and giving a compromise on her, on effectively her memorial park because the staff have said, here's a playground, find a place to put it. Okay, so if you both of you can assure me that that's not the case, then we will just let it go. Um, well, can I speak to that first uh, through the chair? Um, what I would say was we were aware of the master plan happening in Memorial Park, and I have been having meetings with Anna and along with Tanya Proctor and other staff members to make sure that we're all on the same page. So that that's all I can say to this at this point. Yeah, so we have been working alongside Jeanette and um, as far as the landscape plan and um, the items, I think it is exciting for Kaikui. Um, but like Jeanette said, there's budget constraints. So, yeah. It's, okay, so, I mean, so as long as we haven't compromised in any way with this park in this respect, I'm happy. Cool. Cool. In, in that following um, that reasoning, I guess what I would have, this is the this is the once in a lifetime opportunity that we as a community board invested in getting us plan for, for the Memorial Park done. It's the main part for our uh, board and really for our district, right? So it's like if there were a thing, we want it to be the best um, because we're not going to do it again. Yep. So if there are budget constraints, like if we are slacking back on things that we want that are in the plan or that we want, then I would want to know what those are and how much they cost and if there is any way that we can get the further funding to realise the full dreams and aspirations of the yep. Memorial Park Master Plan. Also knowing that as a community board, we also have other pools of money that have been increased in the latest long-term plan. Yep. Uh, what is it? Community funding, what's the other one called? The 100k one reward. So like we, we have money that we could potentially use if we saw fit because this is our baby, this yep. plan. But also if there was a way that we could go out and get further funding from elsewhere to realise the be all end all dream. When I look at the playground that's on here, uh, I don't know, I, it's cool. Whatever happens is going to be cool, but I want it to be the best. So. Is, is it too late in the piece? Or are we just getting well, the best that we can do, right? Yeah. Best we can do. I don't know, Margaret Mahi's playground is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is a $4 million park. <laughs> I know, but it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. A little tower thing, you know, like, is it an extra five grand to go another four higher? You know, all of them is doing that. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> What, what if we cut back on, and how much did that, would it cost to actually bring it back in? Or is it too late now? Uh, so through the chair, the compromises? through the chair, it, it is not too late to put a hold on this. Um, we have we have a playground supplier that um, hasn't been fully engaged at this point. They were the preferred supplier. Um, one of the things that we did take out and which we all thought was a really good idea was a bridge from the tower across to the uh, skate bowl, but we would have to do something with the skate bowl. And with the current budgets, it just didn't, we just didn't have the money to do that. But it's not too late to put this on hold. Yeah, so, okay, so, so part of this whole Let's have a big plan and work on it. Means that potentially, yeah, potentially there wasn't there wasn't anything out of budget. It was just out of budget this year. So this uh, because because I know I know that you've made the point that you want to engage with the community over the skateboard bowl. I mean, so is that holding us up? I mean, the, the fact that you, I mean, are there things that Anna wants to do with her plan that can't be done because the staff are too scared about, the, 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 too scared of doing anything with the skateboard bowl? Um, and, and given that, I mean, and once again, we, we, right when we go, we've said, 
in Memorial Park, as far as we're concerned, whatever Arda and her team want and have, can, and can effectively justify based on their work in consultation with the community, they should get. Again, so, so for, for this report saying, hey, look, we put uh, handbrakes on Arda and her filling in of, in of the, um, the skateboard bowl, it goes against that very premise. No, no, that's something completely separate. No. Why is it good? No, she can't fill that skateboard bowl in because the community, not all the community want it filled in. Or whatever. I've done some consultation regarding the skate bowl, so I'll just talk to that now. <laughs> um, yeah. The reason we even thought of that as an option is because the amount of feedback we'd been getting from Fano that they thought it was unsafe for Tamariki. So we did do some consultation and there are people in the community that use it. So we won't be filling it in is pretty much uh, as long as it's been utilised. Uh, yeah, so that to even develop that skate park well is a whole nother project. Um, Thank you. Yep, so. <laughs> it's, yeah. and, and I thought we were doing this and so that it really was about the toilet, you know. So, I mean, the toilet could definitely start, couldn't it? Like, does it all have to happen back, back at the same time? The toilet is happy to be down, so yeah. down the back anyway. You know, and if there isn't quite enough money to do, you know, the three more layers on the tower, can the tower not wait six months? Or does it all have to happen all at once? Um, so through the chair... Yeah. Yep. So through the chair, no, it doesn't all have to happen. It doesn't all have to happen at the same time. The Memorial Park toilet has funding this current financial year. <clears throat> The only thing that was waiting for with the Memorial Park was the final designs to come through from um, Anna's team, and we've now got those. So um, that can go ahead. There's an amendments to the building consent that are, that will be done, but that project is in this year. That toilet is in this year's work. Um, and I think, um, yeah, the Learn to Ride Bike Track is we feel fully resolved and like, yeah. Um, okay, cool. The, 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 part, the main park around, the main street park around the park is fully resolved. Um, so there's a large amount that could proceed quickly. Um, okay, any more? Yep. Looking at the tower, it looks quite high, and there's talk about making it even higher. Is that tower safe? Like, 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 Not for you. <laughs> um, I'm scared we, of heights. <laughs> all of the equipment meets all the safety requirements. Um, it's all signed off as part of the playground equipment. They have all that kind of safety bit crossed off. And I have seen that um, one, like, where have I seen? And, pop it off. and it, it's not as high and scary as it looks in that photo. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite. Favorite. <laughs> So there is a whole yes. playground safety standard that the designers, the playground people all work to, and, and they know that standard better than we do. There is something on that playground with these pictures. It says concept only, subject to change. Yeah. So we say yes, and then you don't put half of that in and you go, oh, but it was in there, it's said subject to change. So is, is what on there actually has got the, the full tick? Sorry, Kelly, can you just, um, oh, that's just a concept. So what we've given you is a concept only and it could be subject, subject to change um, if we don't sign it off. That's what that means. Everything that's showing, we can afford with a little bit of a deficit at the moment, but the budget sheet at the back covers that off, hopefully. Not even getting the towers, Steve. Um, yeah, shade sailing isn't a part of this. Is, are we, how much does it cost to shade sail this so that it can be used in more fun summers now? <laughs> 
So we haven't costed shade sailing as yet. And um, I have put, I have included shade sailing for um, parks as part of the LTP, as an amendment to the LTP. So in the coming annual plan, I've flagged shade sails as a need around the district. So we can potentially, it can be brought in there, but this design, right, is it the design, is it designed to be able to retrofit shade sailing in, or? I would have thought so, but I can get that clarified. There was, we are designed, I mean, we, we know there's, um, that the community have raised around shade and the playground. So we, you know, we have been keeping that in mind that um, it would go up and then shade could come in afterwards, as is like the barbecue area, making sure that if we need to put shade in, we can do that. Sorry, that is an oversight on my part again. Sorry, um, I will get that sent out to elected members after the meeting. And cover off your tree, it might already been getting removed. Mm. I'll, I'll just wait. There. I just want to ask a few questions. Okay, wait, yeah, Laurie. At the bottom of page 51, they talk about filling in the skateboard. Um, and I just skate hole, I just think that would be unacceptable. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's we've got a grant of 120,000 from ASB to do it and to fill it in just because Kerry Kerry, I'm not going to stop the family. Yeah. Yeah, so no, we're, not, we're not filling it in. That's not happening. No, yeah. that's good. And the other, my other comment was I asked to meet uh, Jeanette, is it? Yes. Yesterday, that, that didn't happen. Sorry, what did you ask? Yes Pardon? I didn't receive any requests yesterday, sorry. Didn't receive any requests. Well, it came from the front desk at about 1:30. I came in here to meet you because I wanted to deal with this first before it came before the board. Otherwise, I've got to vote against it, and and they're only minor, and I think they can be dealt with. One is a pine tree right on the boundary, which I think is a danger to everything, and the other one is the boundary on Station Road is right in the middle of the footpath and that needs to be addressed by council but i'm sure we can come to some agreement and fix it it's just that if i vote for this now it says that i approve of it and i just think those are two anomalies that need to be addressed by council so laurie is a neighbor to the park yeah Okay, I'll take that on board. One, one large pine tree right on the boundary. Is it a boundary to your property? Pardon? Is it right on it? And, and, and it would be dangerous just left there on its own. So I intend to take some other trees out in my own property because they're a nuisance to the Pioneer Village. And we could do it all at once. I didn't plant them. <laughs> Needs it to die. They need to go. Okay, so there's, there's there's two issues that Laurie has as the next door neighbour. I mean, they're, they're not appropriate to discuss here, um, but if they can be looked after, please. Yeah, um, because I, I mean, because even if he wasn't on the board, I'm sure that the board would like it solved because it's, it's a, it's a neighbouring person who has a has two legal issues that with the council. I'm surprised that the council never even contacted me under the RMA. It's their duty too. I'm an affected party under the RMA, and council didn't even bother to contact me. At least I tried to contact council and was unsuccessful, obviously. Even left my phone number. Okay, right. Yeah. So, is there any other questions of Anna and Jeanette? Yes, I got one. So there is some money set aside for um, an outdoor stage. Um, I just want it to be known that I don't want you guys to steal that money for this project because it's still there for an outdoor stage for this town. That's it, wasn't even the question. Was this you, you made a note of that, Jeanette. Was this statement? 
I have identified the money for the outdoor stage and it's not included in any part of this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any further questions before we put this, before we start discussing this as a motion? Who would like to move it? I'll move this. What will all Tapania and, and, and Kelly? I'll shake it out. Yeah. Okay, move and second the following motion. The Kaikei Hokkien Committee Board approves the final concept of Memorial Park as developed by ARCO, approves the removal of a cashier entry close to the final, close to the final location of the Parapoku, Parapaku, approves the use of streetscape budget for the landscaping furnished footpaths, tree works, and the learn to ride paths the Memorial Park to the tune of 344200. Approves the use of the town beautification budget for the new civil works and servicing of new playground within the Memorial Park. 100,000. Approves the use of the amenity lighting budget for new lights within the Memorial Park, 18,500. Okay, first and second, uh, Mukul, do you have anything more to say? Um, that I am honestly so excited to see some big progress in in the short time that I've been there cancelled. It's going to be awesome. And you're going to see me, probably with no kids, using <laughs> the bird to ride track and the bloody playground. And don't report me, I'm just going to be taking it all in and enjoying it. <laughs> you're doing all the things you, you should have done as a kid, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, just like Hoko, I am excited about that too. In fact, at long last, I think, uh, you know, Franco has been waiting for something like this. It'll keep our kids off the street. It'll keep them busy all day long. Yeah, good on Kai Carrying House. Next is Rowling's turn for the... Yeah, oh, look, I'm, I, I think this is marvellous too. And, and, and thank you, Anna, um, for sticking around. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Anna. Exciting to see it up. Right. Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. Anybody against? Aye. Gary. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Anna. Have a good day. I've abstained. Thank you. Noted. I, I have to abstain. Yeah, yeah. That'll be the best thing. Well, I agree in principle, those two issues have to be addressed by council. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Okay. Um, do we want to speak to... No, we're moving on to... Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, cool. Okay, so 6.5, um, Mahpuri Wharf, renewal of the intersection. Um, so, does someone wish to move this or something else? Louis, have you thought about this? Yeah. Uh, I do like the lower wharf that they put there, the, what they call it? The, the intertidal landing. Yeah, the intertidal landing thing. And I'd hate to see that go. You know, and, and, and the thought of climbing up around those ladders, bringing up whatever you may want to bring up from your boats looks a bit scary. Sorry, apologies from me. Um, my younger cousin here is a interview to go to boarding school at two o'clock, and I'm going to support her in her interviews. Which one is called? St. Joseph's Old Girls College in Hawke's Bay. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't want to She'll get in. Say hi to all of us, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and good luck with the rest of the day. Thank you, Bob. Have a good day, and thanks for your input. So we haven't moved a second yet. So no, we, we haven't moved a second yet. Oh, I'll move it just to get OK, so, so Louis moves that the Kaikei Hokianga Community Board receives the Omapri, sorry, receives the report of the Omapri Wharf renewal in section and B supports the new design concept for the replacement section of the wharf. Do I have a second that? Yeah. OK, Louis, your turn. Yeah, just, just, it's a pity they can't sort of bring the other, the other thing back. <laughs> The landings, lower landing sticks and things like that. Uh, especially seeing they're going to raise the wharf another metre. So that would mean that I guess it would go down and have to go down even further to get there. So, but yeah, I'm happy with getting something done there. Okay, so you're you you on go. It's far more dangerous trying to negotiate a ladder to carry gear up or down to a boat 
it's far easier to have a landing where you're level with the boat and safer and safer for people that jump off the wharf that need to get back onto the wharf safely. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Mm. So you're reduced the utility, isn't it, of this place? I mean, basically, you can't you can't put a boat there anymore. Is that fair? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm on screen as the report later. Hi, Darren. Have you seen the one at the stone store? Hi, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll just, you just hold there. We'll ask, ask you questions as we get yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right, you haven't been here before, Darren. So what we normally do is we normally take the report as read, and you'll you'll hear uh, answer questions rather than explain the report. Thank you. Okay. Stone store, Laurie, you were saying. Huh? You were saying something about. Yeah, that. the stone store is a good landing. In the, in the, there's quite a high rise and, and low in, in the tides there, and it's really good and just really answering what what Alan has said. And it can be difficult getting off at the wrong, you know. Of, 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 at the wrong level of the water and, and the stairs and can get hurt quite badly. Whereas that stone store one is excellent and rises with the tiles. I'm just wondering why that, that couldn't be done. See, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, the, the, my concern is if you look at the use of the, the, the use of the wharf, right, you can walk in, you can walk out and walk back. That's one use. You can walk out, fish and walk back. That's another use, okay? You can walk out, jump off, Walk, you know, then, then climb back on, jump off, climb back on, jump off, then walk back. Or you can land a boat on it and walk off. Now those final two things are no longer are no longer right. I mean, it will be done. You can still jump off and climb up one of the ladders. I don't know. You can not by tide. The ladders will be oh, well, reaching the water, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 not as safe, I don't think. If if you're trying to carry gear off it's, or onto a boat. It's unsafe. That's really impossible to do that by ladder. And how often does the Coast Guard use it? All the time. And I'm no. a Coast Guard member. I was a skipper for seven years. Is there anything you haven't done? I can't. <laughs> he hasn't been to the moon yet. Um, just, just yes, he has. Picking, picking, picking up on what uh, Alan was saying is my biggest concern. And being a Coast Guard member, saying that Dopen only can't use that and only one at low tide, and you use this one. Um, and then take the gear on and off. So I actually strongly look at getting some sort of access, be it the, yeah. uh, you know, the steps leading down as they did have, and then going for something that's going to be less susceptible to wave action, which is one of the problems that we've raised here, and having, um, you know, having the um, fiberglass grating, what are they using, or bolted with stainless steel, which is going to cost about another two hundred cable. Yeah. Um, so at least you made it. Um, personally, I'd say that was a higher priority than raising it, to be honest. I know the, the argument is we'll, we'll raise it a metre, uh, but that, that tide level is not expected to hit it above the current level in 100 years, and then it's gone past its use by day anyway. So I would have thought the higher priority is getting those steps in. Said a floating section of it um, was ruled out because of the storm and wave action. Yeah, the roughness there. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I just got to go with what the engineers are saying there. The other thing is, going to, like they were saying, it's going to cost an extra 200000 plus to build that section, to rebuild that section. Now, is there any depreciation on these walls? No, not for us. For us, it's, it's, a, it's a district, all, all maritime assets are district rated assets. Okay, so I mean, if, if you want to look at it, look at it cynically, um, you could say that this is your, you know, this is one of the few opportunities we have in the West of, of actually spending money on maritime assets. Yeah. When have they got their insurance pay up? That's three hundred forty thousand dollars they were going to find elsewhere. Why are they all these steps in? <laughs> Chris, Chris rang me eight months ago and said, look, you know, this is what we're intending to do, what should I do? And I said, look, go out, go out you know, just let the community know what you're doing. Um, don't, don't say it's a consultation, just let them know. Okay, and then, and then if anybody's really concerned, they will let you know. And from what I gather, they did let them know, right? And, and some very high-powered community. You know, that's the Coast Guard and all this other, the Coast Guard and who else? 
there are two, there are two groups that, that said, hey, look, we really want this to have a uh, end of tail steps. And I would say that, you know, and that was the concern I had. You know, there was somebody out there, because I'm not like but there's, 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 now there's two groups out there who have a serious need for steps. And I'm sure there is a way of sort of fixing the problem of slipping down the stairs. I've slipped down the stairs to more steps. Yeah. Ended up with a big bruise on my butt that big. It wasn't very pleasant. I hope it's oh, Dan, by the way, Darren's here. If anyone's got any questions, Darren, just, just I'm just... hoping it's an improvement on the Coco. It's, quite, it's extremely dangerous. Yeah, it's on the air damage. This was still from yeah. Bang Bang. Wouldn't want to build a level on the light. Is that the one in town or by the narrows? Both. Both. Right, at the moment we're getting some more walks built in the Hokianga, so I think we're on the win. Well, I think Martin Tompkins is checking it. Um, you know, what they normally do at Omapri is that they'll have a boat come in, they'll have a skipper on the boat, they'll let a crew member off, the crew member will walk up the steps and up the wharf and over to the car, reverse the car down, the skipper will drive it onto the car. And that's why it's imperative to have that landing. Mm -hmm. And Coast Guard, you've got to offload injured okay. people from the bottom landing. Yeah. Yeah, the upper landing is not comfortable. No. Okay. So does, does someone wish to... Um, okay, so you've, you've heard us, Darren, with regard to this, I mean, and, and our concerns are these intertidal steps. Okay, so um, when we when we spoke to Chris this morning, um, basically it was, it was a toss-up between all the reasons you would have steps versus we haven't designed steps into it because they're slippery. Um, yep. So... From our point of view, it looks like we would like steps reconsidered. Do you have a comment yep. on that? Um, so that's certainly something that can be considered. Um, looking at the design that uh, FNHO have proposed, obviously it's fitted for but not with, with those uh, two extra piles at the end of the wharf. Um, so if we can um, attract extra funding or additional funding, then they can go in. Um, I do take the point of you know, the safety impl uh, implementations and the Coast Guard's need for that um, transfer of passengers from boat to shore. I don't know if there's a, you know, this is just me asking the question, if there's a change of SOP that could be, you know, um, looked at there, whether they drive straight up onto a ramp and then disembark personnel or whether it has to be at, at a sea level. Um, position. Um, so that would be a question from me um, in terms of those use of intertidal steps. Uh, a question, uh, the point to the ladders in terms of they will go down to mean low water, uh, that will be a safety requirement of, of the wharf because if someone falls over they need to have a means of um, exiting the, the sea via a set of ladders so that will be um, a regulation that they need to adhere to so that will be the case. Um, and that's all I have to add, really. So, so why don't say again, sir. So why don't ladders get slippery? Well, they do. Okay. So it, it's a, they're through the chair. The, the from a safety perspective, things that we need to consider are do. Do we accept people jumping in and out of the wharf? Is that an expected behaviour or would we not expect people to do that? People clearly do. Um, so the ladders would be there more for that safety function. I to allow someone to exit the water should they fall in, not necessarily jump in. <laughs> um, by putting the intertidal steps back in, do we encourage the behaviour of jumping in and therefore potentially increase the risk of a, a drowning risk because we are actually encouraging people to enter the water from the top of the wharf. Um, so these are things that, that may need to be considered when making our decision whether we want to put those title steps back in and how we convey the behaviours of public in the area. Yeah. Yeah. 
whether you put a sign up there, and even if you had someone standing on the wharf going, no jumping in the water, you're always going to get children jumping in the water. And in the holiday period, you can get up to 30 or 40 kids jumping off there. And uh, it still doesn't solve the problem of how you embark and disembark off a boat before going onto the boat ramp to come out of the water. You still have to unload gear and people. Okay, so so right, so we're not Darren's not here to debate. That's yeah. like, our job. Yeah. Okay, Darren's gonna answer questions. So yeah. yeah. Um Okay, so what do you want to do, guys? I mean do you want to strongly recommend or demand that um intertidal steps be designed in or be investigated, even investigated, right? I mean, because at the moment we haven't really got a strong a strong um, investigation into steps in this report. I mean, we just assume they're not happening. But and and we're not the experts. So would it be worth us saying, um, go out and consider intertidal steps and do and and and, and come up with a better either a better design or a better solution or a better reason. So the um, from what I heard is you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are the, the wharf piling has been done to take in the intertidal steps sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah. So in actual fact we do approve this um, you can begin the construction of it and have no delays. Uh, but and there is no um, change to the piling layout that's needed for the type of steps. So is that is that understand it correctly? That's, that's the one. Yes, through the chair. So that, that's that's what I understand. Is it that with, they're fitted for, but not with? So they're future proofed. Yeah. So maybe it's a, another um, and that in the uh, C, which is um, saying uh, C. You know, strongly recommend. So, so the full functionality of the wharf can be restored. Uh, seek the insulation of, uh, you know, of these intertidal steps um, and that process of intermingling, something, something of that effect. But in the meantime, you can you know, continue with the construction. So I'm just okay, so, um, so what's your thought? The, the meeting administrator has suggested some wording that intertidal steps be investigated and report be brought back to the Kokomi Hookout okay, Community Board. Um, more than investigated, um, I'd say that it'd be yeah, strongly it's recommended that the time steps be incorporated in the build. Can we just put the steps be reinstated? I think that's strong enough. Oh, that. Like, yes, we don't even just put them back. Yeah, there's the funding for one, though. Right. So there, there's oh, there's one million million that they need it. Like I don't, I don't want to, yeah, just thinking about it, I don't want to end of the go away and start building because yeah, there's, no, yeah. there's nothing stopping intertidal steps being put in. Yeah. But I want to signal that that's, that is a second phase and we say go ahead and get funding if you can from somewhere. And, and they have got the funding, John. It says here, should the insurance claim be unsuccessful, the use of the 340 thousand contingency funds within the Hokianga Harbour program and the planned 350 million funds be used to fund the complete project. But they just got the insurance of the 340, which means that $340,000 sitting just below that is still there. Okay. That's 200 So you, you have got the funding for the title steps. Is that correct? So, but, so I haven't seen the insurance sorry through the chair so i haven't seen the insurance claim through um yet so i don't know what the value of that will be in terms of what they've actually achieved and attracted um so that was something i would need to take away and then do some squirreling with figures well if the insurance company was watching chris this morning on youtube PC. when he said that the the, the wall was going to fall up fall down anyway then the insurance claim is going to be zero isn't it <laughs> so when it's falling down naturally, you know, I don't think it's correct. It was damaged by the, uh, you know, by the incidences that occurred. Um, so if insurance is covering it, let's let's and it, usually insurance looks for like for like. So no no enhancement. 
So, like for like with me, these titles get to there, so I'm not pushed for you know, putting the claim in for the, for the whole project. I'm sure he said that it was, it came through. Yeah, did that's what he did. Yeah, he said it's okay. So there is the Okay, what I, what I, um, okay, I'll move an amendment to see that intertidal steps be included in this one. Yeah. There you go. All right. We've got a second of the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment? Aye. Okay, cool. Okay, Any, anything else? No. Okay, all those in favour of the new entire motion? Aye. Anybody Aye. against? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Aye. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, sir. Okay, have a good day. Yep. Have another headache. Sorry? Have another headache. <laughs> we do have Nick Marshall on the line for this room. The has anything changed? Okay, right, six point six. Okay, who's the one? Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall, Nick, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, you want us okay. Oh, where are you? <laughs> Can we have a full size? <laughs> oh, okay, you got a filter. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we sorry. Have, you were somewhere. <laughs> Where you were actually at the beach or something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's in the island somewhere. It does he? Dreaming. I'm trying to figure out your backdrop. <laughs> I can change it to the real one. Okay, last time, I'm going to start off with a question. We're going to do the same here, Nick, because you're not here. We're going to ask you questions, then we're going to go on to the motion. Um, so last time we had a meeting with your team. Um, Oh, I think it was a, it was a workshop. workshop yeah. um, we were going to provide, and we did, a list of Kaito streets that have been left off, and you were going to come back with a number from NZTA about how much were they were going to fund. So, have either of those things been included in this? Have both of those things been included in this? Um, the short answer would be no for the NZTA funding. Because at the time this was published, we hadn't got the answer yet, although we have now got yeah. that answer. And yes for the other. Okay, so what was the funding? What what funding do we have? What funding does the NZTA give us this time around? This time around, they have opted to fund none of the footpaths for Far North. Yeah. So. Okay. Now it's going, there is an agenda item going to council specifically for that issue. Okay, and Kelly, what? Are all of our, are all of our Kaikoi, um... That's, that's just the Kaikoi footpaths, is it? Or is it... No, this is the ball. NZTA. No, yeah. they're not funding. Okay, so we, so we don't get any NZTA funding. So what we've got yeah. is we've got, we've got $150,000, is that right? We've got no money. Well, we've got $150,000. Uh, sorry, Nick, we've got 150k this year. There's 150k that's community board funding. The balance, yep. which is council funding, the local share of it, that decision is going to council as to whether it will be reinvested back into the footpaths or, in fact, potentially topped up as well. So that's a separate agenda item going up to full council. Okay, and depending on how that um, how that works, we'll we'll get another decision to be made. Is that right? Yes. So my yes. recommendation would be we, if we're happy with this list, adopt it, and then that enables, depending on how much funding we have got to play with, where how far down the list that funding gets. Okay, cool. Now, Kelly. Not very far. Kelly, so you gave a list to. NTA of yeah. Kaikoui footpaths. Yeah. Okay, so your list must have been zero long. Because I it wasn't. It's still in my bag. Okay. Okay. So Nick, at our, at our workshop, okay, uh, we agreed that I mean, we, well, I, I don't know the lady's name, but we agreed that um, she would be given a list of um, she took of, the, of, of stuff in Kaikoui that was not on the list. Um, and she was actually, I found out later, I found out straight after that she'd been given a photocopy of that list. Okay, um, and none of them, are, according to Kelly, none of them are here. So they haven't been included. So they have, but the list. 
sorry, the list here is the ones recommended to be implemented if we got the funding. It's not the comprehensive list of every path that could be treated. Okay, so at the risk of repeating myself um, from last meeting and the last meeting and the last meeting before that, um, it is the community board's concern that be, be, in the last decade, we've been left off the footpaths in, in this district and we, and we were severely underfunded. And one of the promises we made to ourselves is we would not do that to our communities. In other words, we wouldn't fund one community at the expense of others. Okay, so we've always said in the time that we have control over, the money will be equally spread, equally spread across the just the, the board, uh, depending based roughly speaking on population. So what we've got here is, you know, the, the majority of the population is in Kaiko, yet none of the footpaths are in Kaiko. So, so we we're not, we're not. I mean, I can't imagine that we we're going to have a plane sailing for this through here, and I can't even imagine it's going to be passed simply because there are no Kaiko footpaths. I guess that uh, decision is yours, but no, I do understand what you're saying. Okay, so, so, okay thanks. Right. So what was your priorities then, Kelly? Oh, I still want to point to the show notes. But how many millions is that? You've got a cost that's, of that. Um, that's a bit. But, you know, even on here, in, on that list, I mean, there's one in Mitty Mitty. Well, that one's just disappeared. Yeah, right? that's gone. You know, <laughs> but it's on this list. So took that off. And remember, I mean, the NZTA is not part of us at all now. They actually make a decision finally, don't they? Yeah. We don't seem to make a decision. No, I, mean, I think oh, so. I mean, there's another one there, West Coast Road School to the Uruguay. Yeah. I mean, that's not even on this list. I mean, that's on the Kaikoui one, but they have slipped away completely. Okay, it, it looks to me as though somebody has decided and it's not necessarily you, Nick. I know you're being you're being, you're being um, thrust here in front of us, and you didn't write the report, okay? Um, but we have asked over and over again for our concerns about the the, the equitable distribution of footpaths, and here we get a report that is pretty much saying exactly the opposite. No matter how many times we ask, um, what do we do? I mean, okay, so here's the question. Do, do we, have we been worn down by these reports and therefore we just give up and, and let, the, let the, the, um, the, the report writer get their way and they just do it their way? Or do we still want to exert our, our fairness lens over these footpaths? When, when Jakob took over, um, you know, we, we lost all that funding that went before that because I asked the question, yep. What happens to the funding before that, but that's still owed to us? He sort of said, oh, well, it's a new ball game there. And then I sort of said, made a point, well, that's the problem with all this. The goalposts keep getting changed. Yeah. We make that point at the time, and it looks like the goalposts well, are we... still being changed every time. Every, every time well, you remember that $80,000 we chose not to spend. I know. That we agreed, and I, and I, I beg yep. the last time, yep. that we allocate that money to do... You were right. I, I apologise. We, we, we would like to. You know, and, and that 80000 is gone. And the 750000 we lost in the previous years that was allocated to council. Yep. So, you know, we, we're, being, we're being ripped off. We're being pushed aside in the Hokiang and Kaikoui. We're just not getting things done. Rowney hasn't seen any of the footpath money over the years. Open only has finally got some last year, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know it just it doesn't get here. And Kohuko has got a bit, you know. Yeah. But we just feel frustrated and angry that oh. we keep missing out. I guess it's not really Nick's fault. I know it. You're the figure head at the moment, are you? <laughs> My Jakob was the figure head last time. And he sort of said, yeah, well, that, that went before me, so I don't know about that funding. Okay, so, so... So at the moment, can I just ask a question? At the moment, do we just have 150? That looks well, like it. Yeah, no, I, I only got 150, yeah. Okay. So, so now, if, if we had passed this motion a couple of months ago when it first came up, we would have had the full amount? No. 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 No, because no, if, 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 yeah. 
because the talker code that he doesn't have the money, so they wouldn't have yeah. given them. They've yet given none of those projects uh, in, the, in the panel, and that's a local share that you're putting out. Thinking what we've got, okay. that's, what, that's what's been talked about. Okay, so he, doesn't this. here's another thought for you, right? Remember now, all of these minutes go to the council, okay? and I get to speak to as they get there, I get to speak to them, okay? So if you wish to word a strongly, sort of make a strongly worded statement to council over the way we'd be treated with footpaths this year, okay, and, and, and the management of the process and the loss of the eighty thousand dollars, which we were promised only a year ago, would still be there, then here's the place to do it. I, I sort of remember that we actually sort of tell council this is all we've had in the last so many years. Oh, they know. Oh, you know right. it, 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 I, th I think what we're concerned about is 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 the is the things that have happened in their time, right? I mean, just I mean, it was just last year, wasn't it? The eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, it was, it was last year. So last year we declined to spend eighty thousand dollars on because some, we thought it'd be better. Well, no, we were, told, we were told we were told that there was a chance later that it could be added to, right? And we decided to take that risk. And, and we were told, in no uncertain terms, that we would not lose that $80,000. And, and, and there's a, a, an action, on the, a motion on the action sheet, motion passed me, expressed bitter disappointment at the NZTA failure to hold the workshop. So, you know, the, the, we, we keep getting... Oh, we did hold the workshop, though. Yeah, yeah, but, but that, uh, you know, and request that, yeah. It's, uh, but yeah. We, get, we, get, we get shunted sideways, we get okay. COVID has been a bit of an issue, but but we seem to sort of keep getting missed out on stuff, and it's just not fair on our communities. Yeah. So what do you want? Do you want a motion to say? Okay, so I move that the Kaikei Hawking Our Community Board de to decline to consider the report six point six on the agenda um, because our concerns over the equitable distribution of footpaths continue to be ignored and the $80,000 that we were promised we would not lose in the last financial year has not been taken into account. Well, uh, and wish both of those things to be addressed and we will reconsider the report. I'd actually like to see us move this and see what they do with it. Sorry? I'd actually like to see what happens if we can move this motion and see what they can do with it. Well, well that. Yeah, well, of course you were, because there's no, there's no only point in there. And, 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 and I add, Rami has never had any new footpaths, and the whole time the footpaths... No, yeah, only because you didn't live there last time. Oh, you, mean, you, 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 you got single out. station road. What that's that's not, that's not around. Yeah, but uh, there was ah. no single station road last time. You were there. No, last time it was uh, Man Manning Street. And you got that? No, we didn't. You, we, we, over the last three years, we have evenly spread across the footpaths and they've all been made yeah, across the three wards. It wasn't you put that in the sure. Yeah, but across the three subdivisions. It was something in there. And we, we made was done, there was uh, Tamatawiwi Street, that was done, and there was uh, Waianga Place. And Waianga Place was going to be done the first year, that you, the second year you guys got footpaths. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we wanted to see some progress happening yep. in the Hokianga. Okay. But and that was stopped because of COVID. That's now been done. Okay. Signal Station Road was done because they got... But, but in the last two or three years, so when we got in, we said, oh, the, 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 the footpath budget that we have control over, we will spread equitably across the yep. three sort of bridges. And we did. Yep. And all of those all of those footpaths have been done. Uh, Manning Street in Rawani was pushed for, asked for as well, but that wasn't done. Yeah, but it wasn't. But it wasn't part of the the equitable distribution, was it? It was just, or was it? Well, like at one stage, I I, I recommended footpaths in Kohuku, Rawani, yeah, but, but, and Okanani and Marker, so that so progress, people. so that progress could be seen all over the district. But, and I suggested small bikes at these. Yeah, things. okay, and, and we disagree with that. Okay, but yes, but the 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 North Auckland, South Auckland, and Kaikai got the equitable distribution of footpaths in the last three years. Just because you were outvoted or you chose or you were living somewhere else at the time. That's nothing to do with it. Anyway, come on, we're getting later in the day, so we don't have time. Well, okay, does everybody, so, does everybody agree that we should put all our footpaths into um, no? leading up to the, the puzzle shop at Rowling? No, no, I don't think that at all. No. I, I thought we were going to go with That's the project. That's going to be after the bridge project. Sorry? That has to be after the bridge project. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, yeah, I, I knew that they put all the money into the bridge project. <laughs> No, that, that'd be a very dangerous bridge. <laughs> Through the yeah. chair, uh, Nick has made a suggestion that the community board request a full schedule of the possible paths. Which is kind of what we asked for in the, report, but it's right in the workshop, right? It is. And that's the shared paths as well, not just the full paths, it's like all of the paths. Yeah, let's make, let's, let's, let's make the request here to get it. We made it several Shared use, unsealed road ones, the whole shebang. I, I would say that we, should we also say that we ask for the delegation to pick up the management of the port uh, or the Okoike or Kenya, because clearly it's not being done. I don't know, that's probably... Well, we need something stronger than that. Yeah, I you know, we're going to back them into a corner. Well, okay, so my, 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 my motion a minute ago was that yeah, we... Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so my motion was oh, the Parkway no, Game Board no, and the Community no. Board refuses no. to consider the report 6.6 .6 on the agenda of 6th of October. Well, I think it makes it too easy for them to say, okay, okay. we'll just forget about all those footpaths in that area. Well, then we'll make it all make part of the... Part of the board. Yeah. You know, i got no problem with that yeah. equitable yeah. stuff for Kaiko yeah. on the list, but I don't want to and see us... Next year, coming back with a year after or five years down the track, it's still nothing. Okay, to well, okay here, here's my point, right? We are not being listened to by the NTA. Okay, they keep on bringing back the same report time and time again, despite us asking them not to. Okay, so my question to you, and this is the question I ask the councillors, okay, at what point do you give up and give the staff what they want? Excuse me, ladies. Um, our staff online can hear the chatter in the background. Okay, and we, we just give up, okay, and, 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 and acquiesce to the to the obvious um, the opinion of the, the provider, despite what we want, or at what point do we continue fighting for what is right? That's right. The other thing we can do, Mike, is we can set, because we've got this list here, and we, we know we've got 150, yeah. And there's certain things that you can't do. Like you can't do the Pine Hill Street 500k because 150 doesn't fit. And that's kind of how you define it. But so we could pick some out of here. We could pick some out of Kaiko. But there are no Kaiko dots. That's, that, that's oh, what we have. But we've got them. So we can get them and do this in other ways. We say these are the ones we pick. Okay, what's a Kaiko? Kaiko. Um, we were doing the perimeter of um, Park. We were going down Carey Road. We were going lots of places. But you know, look at these ones here for Timothy Timothy. West Coast Road to the school and then from the school to the They were all just wishless, but nothing happened. I know, but so these estimated costs on this, which this is quite old, so it would have changed. One was $80,000 and one was sixty. We could send all of that for part money and Richard Money could get their first for part. But it's not on the list, so how would you know? Well, we can't even take not... this because that costing would be so wrong. So it would be pointless to say. It's not on the list of subsidised footpaths. I'm saying there's no subsidised. Well, we're going to do what we want now. There's no yeah. subsidised. This year there's no subsidised. So we can tell everybody to get stuck and this is what the board wants. Yeah. Hey, what, does, anyone, does anyone remember what the um, what the ratio, the rough ratios were? Well, over here it sort of says there's going to be. No, about... in the past. I mean, so. Roughly, if, if we had a million dollars, roughly how would we split it amongst um, North well, and South Hokianga? In the past, we were going to do it half and half. Half for the Hokianga's and half for the okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question for you. If, if we simply pass 75,000 bucks of Hokianga for parts, of, of Hokianga for parts, and then ask that the, um, the, the, the staff come back with 75, or, or, or come back with another report for Kaikai, to go okay to work. Would that work? Why don't we just, just, why don't we just nominate the names of the ones that we want in Kaiko Week? We'll take this list down. Well, I, mean, I, would, I would, once again, I expect that the, the, um, the we've got a full path matrix and I would expect that a, a number of choices at the top of the full path of the way that matrix but make our way here, right? I think if we don't state them, they won't give it. Yeah, we, we, we can select that now and say, here's, here's what, 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 what to do in the beginning. Oh, the whole yeah. yeah. So, 75 grand in the whole yeah. That's not going to do much these no, days. Right. And, 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 and when we were dealing with that issue before that, we looked at doing part of this road, part of that road, and part of this bit, you know, doing things in sections so that it would 
be spread around. That's what we agreed to in the past, but it didn't happen, and the footpath didn't happen. We've okay, got, so we've got a $5,000 one in Open Only, and at the same time, they were going to do another $5,000 one in Open Only, which has now gone up to $30,000. Okay, so are there any North Hawking ones here? No, I don't think so. There's some. I think you can check out Freeze Park. Yeah, yeah Freeze Park. Yeah, I've got a report uh, for the last meeting. That was probably last year's one. Yeah, yeah. No, this was, yeah. 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 And, and there was no, one that's right at the beginning. Off. So of these ones, what would you say, what are your priorities in there? Well, you can't have Parnell Road because... Well, it's with Parnell Road, it's an existing footpath that is in such a bad state of repair in places that it could come out of other budget, and that's what we talked to Sandy about, and she sort of said, there it is. Oh, because I mentioned it to her that that's, that's a half a million dollars. All the combined money doesn't add up to half a million dollars. No, no. How are we going to how are we going to do that? She said there is other funding available and other funds. And I I actually walk along Parnell Road. We could probably do the Parnell Road for now. What we need to do is look at ones that actually need to be done. Pardon? Yeah, you know where the stairs are going up to the footpath near the hospital. Those are getting very rickety. You should, okay. And, and, and how are you going to do that? You know? When you say other funds... We're up to the hospital. You know where, where the boardwalk is along the top? Yeah. Then there's a set of steps that goes down to Renee's place. Old, um, what's his name? Oh, Bill Tucky's house. Oh, yeah. You know, they walk up Bill Tucky's driveway and then they go up a steep slide of stairs. Anybody with walking st uh, walking sticks or crutches or wheelchairs will not be able to get up. So is that on the list? Yeah. That's part of the Parnell. Yeah, but there's not a lot of people who use that at the yeah. moment. No, because no, they can't. They walk know, along the road. What we do is they walk along the road. I mean, which is rather than talk about it and it'll take it so long, we just get a list of books so, that have come to 150,000 so <laughs> that we get half from here. <coughs> So, so if, if I understand what you're saying, Louis, if we said spend seventy-five thousand dollars on part of the plan, on part of number one, in other words, give, give the give the give, the, um, give Nick and his team the instructions to spend seventy-five thousand dollars on that length somehow to get the best value, would that would that achieve or do, or do you want a particular part of it right well well if if we're going to do things peacefully I, I would rather see uh you know manning street being done because it's a photo camper yeah, yeah. okay so and number if, two if camper vans go up there and people have to walk on the road in competition with the with the traffic okay so number two so well, well, manning street is with and, and that's the one i asked last time to spend the money on with the eighty thousand that was left yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so louis is that so I thought the 150 was new capital works. It is. Yeah, there's no so, so there is there is a footpath renewal program. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what the Parnell Street could have done. It. That's the other money you're talking about, I presume, because that's, yeah, that's some the other money I can think of. Like what they did, and which I'm annoyed with as well, like they renewed part of the footpath because it was such a bad state, like it was cracked and all sorts of things. So they renewed sections of it. And I raised the issue with Sandy when she was at a meeting here about why didn't you use the, the required width now because it's still the narrow footpaths you know the 850 width, whatever they are they could have done the yeah, 1.25 yeah. thing you know Be because she said that's not what the budget what was in the budget to do anything it was replacing like with like you know yeah, but and that's and that's but anyway, so okay, well, okay. Here's what I do. I'm going to move to the Kokai Hokianga Community Board, uh, Community Board. Sorry, um, identifies Manning Street Rawani existing house number 54 to Manning Street estimated seventy thousand um, dollars to be funded from to be constructed 100% from Far North Council District funds, um, and that a list of potential Kokai streets be brought back to the board. Um, to be funded from the remaining amounts. So that, that, that's Manny Street Railway, is no footpath? That's a new one? There's no footpath. You know this good? It's got it. Yes. Okay, so can I have a second or all? Yep. Okay, so the, the motion is the Kaikai Community Board um, identifies 
identifies Manning Street, Rawani. Existing house number 54, Manning Street. It's got it there anyway. Oh, existing two house 54, which is number two. Mm -hmm. um, to be constructed from the 100% funded footpath budget. Um, and that the board be provided with a list of Kaiko Streets, a list of prioritised Kaiko Streets for the remainder of the funds. And, and at the same motion, the request that the $80,000 be reinstated. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've got a, I've got a meeting administrator who can't hear me, so can you just, just sit there for a second? Okay, so the motion was... How far have you got? That the Kaikoua Hokianga Community Board identifies Manning Street Darwin existing to the house on 54 Manning Street, estimated 70,000 to be constructed 100% from the foot paving budget. Yeah, that's it. And, oh, and, and a list of Kaikoua footpaths be brought back to the board for consideration for the remainder. And he was the one that did that, Mr. Chair. <laughs> and that. And that. The community board uh, instruct the chair to give a strongly worded statement of the. You can fill the rest of it out. <laughs> to the council. Okay, so, okay, so we've got the first part. That's first A. Okay, and now we need to do need to ask what happened to the other eighty thousand dollars, right? Yeah, we'll give it to the reinstate. Okay, and and request that the remaining footpath budget from previous years. Estimated to be eighty thousand from, la from last year. From last year, yeah. estimated eighty thousand dollars unspent. Yes, but uh, yeah, the remaining uh, well, remaining of the year. Eighty thousand and something. It's it's promised. It's guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got, Aisha? <laughs> and that the and yeah, and request that the remaining forecast budget from last year estimated around eighty thousand be found. Returned. Be found and returned. Returned. And the answer will be on the other side. I think that's what she said, wasn't it? That's what she said. But, yeah, okay, that's cool. But, but that's not what we came to approve for. Mike, yes. are we not going to nominate Woodbrook and Gregory? No, we don't have a list. Okay. So, did you want me to include the and returned part? Yeah, and returned, yeah. For allocation for yeah, well, for yeah, 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 yeah. Right. How does that sound, guys? Yeah. Okay, okay, we've got a second. No, that was. Yep. And you will, and you will take a strongly worded. I'll, I'll, I'll take a strongly worded statement anyway. Yeah. Well, you're going to keep it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Right. Okay. Um, you know my thoughts. Anyone have any further thoughts? Okay. All those in favour? Aye. Right. Carry. Yeah. Does somebody want to break? Running lunch, otherwise. Do you want a break? Again. Or just to carry on. Okay. Item 6.7. Kaiko Hokianga Statement of Field Board Fund. Sorry, Field Board Fund. John moves. Kaiko Hokianga Board receives a report. Kaiko Hokianga Statement of Field Fund account as of 31st of July. Do I have a second? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's John and Kelly. John and Kelly, yeah. Okay. Any, any, um, John, anyone want to speak to that? No. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Okay, um, then we've got one, the same uh, same one for the 31st of August. Who wants to move that? The 6.8, is it? 6.8. Yeah, Okay, so that's Emma, John. Any, any statements? No. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Okay, right, now we're down to funding application of 6.9. Well, just, just with regard to that statement, like the uh, money has been, funds have been uplifted for the Hoping Country Music Festival, but the music festival was cancelled. What happened in that situation? They haven't come back to me yet, um, but usually we'll get an email asking if they can hold it until the next one. They have not come back to me. I have not been notified that it didn't take place, so I can ask them. Okay. Okay, so 6.9. Um, so I'm going to ask now, so that we understand where we're going. Um, does anybody believe that they need to make have discussions about identifiable individuals um, that we need to go into public exclusion for for private for privacy reasons, basically? Well, no, it belongs to the council anyway, so 
Okay, so you're quite, you're quite happy to have everything in open, every, every discussion in an open meeting? Yeah. Yep. And obviously I won't be here for 20 more just now. That's cool. Okay, so I'm going to take these one at a time. We need to ask questions. So yep, we'll you can. We'll take these one at a time just to keep the way it all does. Okay. I'll move the first one with the dollars. Okay, so for the Kaikei Hall Games Committee Board approved for someone's 1785 to be paid from the board's fund account to Ngamaki Toy or Horeki for cost towards installation of murals. I'll second. Okay, second. All right. Kelly, speak. You know that cool. Okay, anybody else wish to speak? No. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Anybody against? Carried. Gee, must have been better than my panic. <laughs> It's a, it's a CO2 level. Okay. Uh, we'll go straight to 7.2C. We'll miss 7.2B for now. Um, the code, okay, so does anybody wish to. Move uh, it with the amount. Okay, so Kelly wishes to move it with the amount. Yeah, I'll see you there. Okay, so the motion on the table, do you wish to speak to it, Kelly? No, I think that's a good one too. Yeah. Anybody else wish to speak to it? Okay, so the motion, and I will read it. The Kaikei Hawkeye Community Board approves the sum of 4098 plus GST applicable to be paid from the board's account, South Hawkeye Memorial Memorial Hall, for cost towards the purchase of an AED. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay, carry. Okay, somebody want to do a 7.2D? Yeah. What with? No, no, not that amount, would you? I don't, it's up to who wants to move. What sort of amount are you thinking of? At eight, at okay, right, I'll move out the without a little blank. But the Kaikei Hawkeye Community Board approves a sum of blank to be paid for the board's community fund account for the youth line. Do I have a second one? Yep. Okay, do I have a discussion before we should do the numbers? You do. I'm happy to call them out. Okay, would well, anyone wish to discuss the merits and demerits of this discussion of this thing? Oh, uh, no, I'm happy to. Okay, I've got, I've got a Catherine in the, in the background. I was just going to say, through the chair, they did get $3,000 from to the community board yesterday. Cool. Okay. 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 Full amount. Okay, full amount is. Okay. Okay, so anybody wish to talk more? All those in favour? Anybody against? Carry $3,000 it is. Okay, um, now, Emma? Yeah. You're in the chair for 7.2B, please, because okay. I am conflicted. Okay, does so anyone recommend John, that? John's conflicted and uh, Kelly's conflicted. I'll move the full amount. You move the full amount. Anyone second that? Yep. Is there any discussion? Go ahead, it's both. Oh, you want to vote on it as well? Yeah, you've got to vote on it. You've got to vote on it. All those in favour? Oh, 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 sorry, all those in favour? No. Oh, no. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Okay, it's passed. Okay, is there anything else on the agenda? Project funding reports? Project funding reports? Oh, project funding reports on. Funding applications. That's the funding applications done. Okay, 6.10, page 118. Okay, this is um, Rob's yep. project. Okay, Kelly moves with the Kaikei Hokianga Community Board note the project report received from the Hokianga Tracks for Kids. Do I have a seconder? Yeah. Okay, anybody wish to talk about this? He does a great job. Yeah, he does a great job. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay, right now. Um, information reports, 7.1, uh, community board action sheet, um, we just need to receive the action sheet, um, it's just here to make things visible, um, so can I go sorry, John moves the Kaikei Hokianga Community Board receives the report, Kaikei Hokianga Community Board Action Sheet, update October 2021, um, so just to keep things visible, I mean is there anybody here who who wishes desperately to talk about anything here? Okay, in that case, all those in favour? Um, what do you get? Harry? Okay, right now, there's a couple of uh, items that we've got to consider is next month's meeting date. Um, I'm, I'm away. And so am I. What are the Yeah. Yeah, the next day. 
I've got a health meeting. And I'm running a bond on the NC that goes on. So we want to change the date. Oh, so right. that's one option. You can change the date or you can appoint someone from someone else from the committee to chair the meeting that day. Yeah. So it's it's, enti it's enti going to be entirely up to you to the, the five that are left, right? Or the six that are left. So do you, do you want to lay it on leak or do you want to have it without us? The um, thing is, it's the meeting that we were going to start at nine o'clock and go around Ramani looking and yep. looking at various community groups and looking at okay. them. So we want to not be communicating with them and setting things up for that. So yep. it means a lot of rechanging. Okay, so you, you, you can have it you can have it when it is. It's totally up to you. Yeah, no, but it's, it's advisable for everybody to see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, we, we might be back in level three, Wally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it might be the level four. <laughs> okay, so like I say, it's it's I'm 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 comfortable both it? ways. Okay, so I'm happy for it to be delayed, or I'm happy for it to happen without me. So we're gonna go. Delay it for a week. We cannot. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Excuse me. We cannot just delay it for a week because there are already other meetings scheduled for that that oh, require true. elected members to attend. Uh, strategic planning and policy. Oh, sorry, infrastructure is on Wednesday of next week. There's also a workshop. What, what's the workshop? Development contributions policy reprioritisation. Do you want to go to those jobs? Okay. What about the Monday? What do we need, John? The Monday after that. When is the meeting? What what date is the meeting? Is it the third? So the meeting is supposed to be when? Sorry, just a moment. The third. The third. Sorry, my fault. So there's an annual plan workshop, the Wednesday the tenth, which all um which all council members need to attend. Okay, so what about the Monday of the following week? Can we go to the Monday? Monday the 8th? Yeah. That's a possibility. How does that send it Saturday week? Monday the 8th. That's all good. Yeah. Starting at uh, hoping a roll at 9 o'clock. No problem. And will, will you guys be away for the second as well when we have the combined community board meeting? Uh, the yes. second has now been uh, postponed until the 17th. Um, you November 17th, and that's because we received oh, I did multiple it. I did um, it. apologies. Yeah. Okay. okay, so how does the Monday sound? Yeah, fine. Yeah, you, you're okay. 8th of November in yeah. Rawani. Yeah, okay, so um, I've got delegations to change that. I just, I've just used them. That's cool. Um, now, in, in our workshop, um, the meeting is still open to public, so I can do this. Um, in our workshop, we suggested as a strategic manoeuvre to ask questions in our meeting of the council to, uh, to bring up to bring uh, to visibility items of voting. Okay, so my question here is: Does anybody have some very clear questions on voting that we can ask as as the board if they wish to get get that clear? Yes, I do. And, and that, that's that road that I was talking about this morning. Which one that? The one following the road. You know, the road that was actually going to be tar sealed. Okay. And nobody lives. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the board um, to, to, sorry, I'm going to ask the board, do they, do they wish to discuss this? You know, just a, it's just a, a general yes or no. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry, is this um, a major item no, not on the agenda? No, hang on, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so we're, I'm just having a discussion at the stage. Okay, so my question is, my question to you all, okay, and remember I'm, I'm pretty flexible on this, but were there any reason, what is the reason this couldn't be on the agenda? She didn't know about it. Okay, because we didn't know about it, that's cool. Okay, that's, uh, yep. Okay, is there any reason we can't leave it till the next meeting's agenda? Getting too close to the end of the final Thank you. Right, getting too close to the end of the calendar year. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The... Through the chair, is there any reason why these re these questions cannot be made into members' reports and submitted by the time the next meeting? Yeah, comes we just around? you just got two questions. You got you got one here. I mean, they can't be waiting the next next meeting because of um, it's getting too close to the end of the financial year. Uh, I'm sorry, too close to Christmas. What you said? 
Yep. Okay, so those are the reasons that, that, that we're going to consider it. So, um, so I'd like a motion to consider this, um, that we, the, the board is happy to consider this, this item. Yep. Okay, so Alan moves that he'd like the board to consider the uh, consider the question that um, would Emma wishes to make to the council. Do I have a second? I need to add that in. Do I have a second? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. All those in favour? One. Okay, right. So we've got we're now now we can discuss. So so Emma, what would you like to move that we ask the following question to the service uh, the Department of District Council? What's the question? Okay, well, first of all, I've um, listed the road that was actually given of the roads, you know, that are going to be to our field. And the road that they said was Pawarenga Road, okay. right? So I actually rang the people in Pawarenga, you know, thinking that we're going to get Pawarenga Road sort of to our field. Okay, so... to find out that it was... Okay, so, so the, 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 Emma moves that the community board asks the council to give a full reason, a full account of the reasoning as uh, to of, why as, as to the, the, act, the actual length of Pauranga Road that was sealed. No, I no. wouldn't say that. Who just involved? No, no, you can't. You've got, to, you, 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 you've got to be very careful, otherwise there's no point in asking the oh, question. Okay. Well, how would I do that? Okay, so you, you want to know what the reasons were that the, the non-residential part was sealed rather yeah. than the residential part was sealed, yeah. right? Okay, so M moves that we ask the following question of the council: um, Why was the non-residential part of Pauranga Road sealed in favour of the re of the residential part? You're going to be sealed. Well, okay. Sort of in the middle of it, yeah. Do we have a second of that? So, so the, the, this is going to council as what part of the council? Oh, just be put in as a uh, to the CEO as a um, as an information request. Sorry, through the chair. Emma, what was the name of that road? Pauranga Road. Pauranga Road. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Uh, Anybody against? Uh, okay, now, in, uh, sorry, um, my member does have a point. Okay. Um, if you have anything that can be included on the agenda, then the best way to do it is through a member's report. Um, just ask a pointed question. I'll make sure that it's asked in the right way. I will support it in my, in my, in my president's report or whatever they call me. What a chairman's report. Um, and we'll get it. And, 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 and we'll get it done. So, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Can I just, Malema? Did you get that email from me regarding from Emily regarding the car park for disabled car parks? From you? You sent it to me. Yes, I sent it to you last yesterday afternoon about four o'clock. Yes, it's there, Emma. Okay. Okay, and final, do you wish to do anything similar with um, Liz Owen's request? I know what's happening with the AKI building. Yeah, yeah. Bloody. Well, it's been there for a little while, hasn't it? A lot of building has been very well. Okay, so the, the, council, the council has instructed the CEO to lease the damn thing to her, or words to that effect or something. Um, but they, they, it, it keeps on going round and round. Basically, that, that they. The negotiate terms of the lease that they're being negotiated or being put to her by the council are uh, you've got to fix the building before we give you a lease. And she's saying, well, not my building. Okay, I'll fix the building afterwards. Okay, and I mean, that seems a fair thing to me. Um, but that's as far as she's got. Now, I've asked the CEO for information in this regard and I have been refused. I haven't been refused, but just been ignored. Um, so I don't know what the truth is. Um, so the only truth that I have is the, is, is the information that Liz has given me. And that is, She's been dicked around. So that was that was asked on your behalf as chair. Oh, I asked at the beginning of September. Yeah, or like yeah. to be brought up to the date. What's happening? So do you want a, a, a motion from this? I'm just saying to do it. If, if 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 you want to do anything, we'll do it under the same um, the Boimer, um things, right? Yeah, we 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 didn't know it happened, so we can't put on the agenda. And this has really got to be sorted out before Christmas. It's going to be vandalised over Christmas. Um, therefore, we've got to do it now. So that's the kind of thing we'll do. It's just a matter of whether you want to do it. We've got a person that's prepared to do the work. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think this, the issue is if Mike asks again, it's just Mike asking again. If we've got from the board a, a request to be made over the CE, yep. then that's, that's. Okay, so what is the request? Does the common sense prevail? Through the chair? Yeah. I understand that this matter is currently sitting with legal. 
Um, there's been some correspondence that Nina Gobi has had a discussion with uh, Liz Owen. She had that discussion last week. Um, so there was no resolution. Council's current stance is that while council owns the land, they don't own the building. So the owners of the building need to bring the building up to code so that it's not derelict before council will enter into an agreement to lose the land. But the, the issue that, that she's got and she raised it is that she needs to borrow money. She said, yes, we will do that. But then they go to go to the bank and borrow money. And the bank said, we're not going to give you any money to do that because you've got no yep. legal no okay. license to do that. And, and the other thing, John. So it's, it's in a style of okay. so From a legal it. perspective, okay, the council has no hold over this, right? Because there is no lease. Well, there was a lease, but it's not with it's not with the people who own the building. Okay, so effectively, the building is there. It's not supposed to be there. It's affecting the council's property, right? Yeah. Um, and so, how can the council ask the owners of the building to do anything? I mean, you know, they're going to the owners. I mean, the owners. The strictly speaking, the lessees of the of the, of the land is not the um, is not the place where people might be finding out. They've never had a lease. Yeah, so they don't have the building as a council. Well, that's the way I see it. Yeah, so basically they should be tracking themselves to bring up the code. So that's why I think that, that, that you know we, we I think we can deal with it. If we delegate this to Why the, to why don't we do it like this, John? Yeah. Why don't the community board ask the council to delegate its 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 well, that's authority what in this that's respect to you being yeah. and then we'll jump in? Yeah. Do that. That'll that'll get things in. Okay, you guys happy with that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so I move that we deal with the item. Sorry, we deal with the discussion about Liz Owen and her. Oh, okay. Got a second? Yeah. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Right. Okay, so we're taking care of Liz Owen. Okay, now um, the motion is um, that the community board, the Kaikoura Hawke County Community Board, requests that the council delegate authority to deal with the Kaikoura lease to councillors Usage, Tepania and Chair Edmonds. Where else was that? Like, well, I lost my train of um, thought. Yeah, authority deal with respect. And yeah, that's that really, is it? What powers do you have to consider oh, this? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, we, we, we should deal with, um, you know, in, in terms of the negotiation or something. What do you think? Delegate the powers to negotiate the terms of the lease. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, or you want to start? Staff still want to have a look at it. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course they will. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, it's, it's got to go through council, yeah. um, and it'll be and by that stage it'll be so watered down. But uh, that somebody will get the idea. Okay. And what do we got, Monica? So we've got currently the Kaikoura Hokianga Community Board requests that council delegate the powers to negotiate the terms on the Okaiho Pay Ground, so Okaiho Pay Centre lease, yeah. to Chair Edmonds, Councillors Busich, and Councillor Tapania. Yep. Okay, all the, do I have a second that? I'll second that. Cool. All the, do you need further discussion? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody who's got any final words before I close this meeting? Yeah, I, I just want to sort of clarify this change of meeting date. You know, yesterday we had a meeting in the hall and they sort of, they sort of said, yes, we're going to have this community board meeting here on the 3rd. And they said, oh, nobody's booked a hall. You will be booking a hall for Rowany on that date, the 11th or whatever it was? Uh, I will now, now that it's the 8th. Oh, the 8th, yeah. And, and people are still happy to come and stay at 9 o'clock to... Yeah, I'll have you pretty happy for 9 o'clock. Yeah, I'll get into it earlier. Good. I've got a uh, Zoom meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. turning up today. Thank you. Thank you, staff members, for putting up with us. Thank you, Marlene, for especially, <laughs> especially Marlene, who, who, who will probably tell me off in a few minutes for the, the games we just played. You've got to thank the audience who's still watching out there. Uh, okay, thank you. And, and, and what's the CO2 levels? Oh, CO2 levels um, have been around about 700, 800 all day, but currently about 700. So I think in the board there may be a little bit of a cognitive decline. I can't see him. I can't, I can't imagine.
Um, that's much.